First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmit it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. First World of Radio, back once again with your host, Dr. Eileen Bay. We're going into Ikram tonight, which is Indigenous Cosmic Golden Ray Order of Melchizedek. So we will be getting busy tonight. So just hold on. We're getting ready to bring on my co-host, Brother Fahim L. You here, brother? Aha, I tell you, Washita East. Hey, I tell you, Washita East. Shaq, how you doing tonight? Doing well, brother. Doing well. How the God doing? Excellent, 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 excellent. All right, we're going to be getting into Ikram tonight. So we're going to be breaking down what is Ikram. Um, so we're going to be doing a little bit of um, question and answering. Matter of fact, it's going to be um, like a little flip this script like we've been doing with Brother Panic. Um, we're going to have the High Priestess um, Chieftain um, Jules L. Bay to come on, and she's going to be actually flipping with me and asking All me right. questions concerning Ikram. Um, so we're going to get into that right now. Let me bring her on. Peace. 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 Yes, we got you. Good. Yeah, I'm clear. Good. 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 Why was Ikram put together? Well, actually, um, being that he's Gemini, um, Prince Bey was a Gemini who was crown prince of Empire Washington de Duc de And in 2003, he came to us, and he already initiated several people in the Atlanta area. Um, and he came to North Carolina and initiated us into... In which that he was a member of the seven golden ray. All right, the seven golden ray. All right, and mm-hmm. as being a member of the seven rays, as we would say, um, he got authority to form his own order, in which that he formed the indigenous cosmic golden ray order in Mount Chesedat. Upon doing so, he came to North Carolina and initiated us into that order also. Um, our cipher, which was about maybe 30 at the time, 
appointed myself and my wife as being um, what we call the Grand High Priest and Grand High Priestess of Ikram. Um, let me go into some of the information concerning Ikram and what Prince Bay actually was putting together here because it's, it's real powerful. And for those who don't know who Prince Bay is, let me go into some of that history also. Um, all right. So, it was founded in 2002 after, after he was initiated into the Seven Golden Arrays of Peru. Um, and he took on the title Prab Melchizedek, which was the acronym of Prince Ramesses Abel Bey, in which he became Prab, P-R-A-B, Melchizedek. And that was the name um, charged to form, and that was the name, you know, that he chose, in which that from there he charged to form his own order, calling it the Ikram or Indigenous Cosmic Golden Ray Order Melchizedek. Um, uh, Later on, he changed the name, his name, to Prince Hutan Tupac Bey. However, he kept the Prime Melchizedek as part of the Ikram name, and he told all of us to also add Melchizedek onto our names as part of the order. Okay. Oh um, wow! So does hmm. that that's on the end of everyone's name? Right, Melchizedek is on the end of everyone's names as part of the order. Um, we took it back not just to the biblical standpoint, but back to ancient Kemet, in which that mm. becomes Malkusutek. Malkusutek is the name Melchizedek, but Malkusutek is a name of Heru, and of course Heru symbolizes the awoken soul inside of our pineal gland. So actually, um, Heru Malkusutek would symbolize the pineal gland and the crown chakra being fully activated and the emergence of the lowest self into the higher self. So it's the combination of the crowns on which that you would see on some of the pharaoh's heads in ancient Kemet, or pharaoh's heads, and you can see the combination of the red crown, which symbolizes the chakras or the lower self, and the white crown, in which that symbolizes the higher self. The combination of both of them is actually Marku Sutek, which is Melchizedek. Um, so hence you have gained the totality um, of what we call Samatawi within the ancient Kemet, right. which is the union of the two, the union of the higher self and lower self. That's basically what we would call it. Um, within mm. the, I guess you say the Holy Quran, Circle 7, as well as also within the 101 and 102, they ask the question, the question is asked by Prophet Nobu Dali, how many selves are there? And the answer is two. Um, the lower self and the higher self. And it says, well, what does the lower self do? Is the lower self does everything in which they're home. Well, what, you know, does the higher self, what is the higher self? The higher self is the mother of virtues. So, is the combination mm -hmm. of the masculine and feminine force, which is androgynous within the physical body, in which that is symbolic to Hiro Marcus Chak. When you see on the walls of ancient Kemet, the crocodile fat being poured over top of the anointed initiate by Heru and um, Tahuti or Jehuti, um, them two together, Heru and Tahuti, actually form the principle of Melchizedek within the Bible. All right? Um, so this this is what I want people to understand is that when you're talking about Melchizedek, you're actually talking about the crown chakra, all right? And anyone who reached that level of consciousness, which is within the immortal body, actually become a high priest, a high priestess after the order of Melchizedek, all right? So that's what we attempt to initiate people into is to into their higher self so they can, you know, stop being so immersed, you know, within their lower self. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so let me say this, too, about Prince Bay, because, um, of course, we know he went through Christianity, Islam, um, Judaism, uh, Hebraism, um, the Moor Sinai Temple. He was, a me he was a member of the um, of Temple 21 there in Atlanta, Georgia. 
he actually was also the secretary of the um, MSTA. Um, he was also part of the Order of the Sufi Brotherhood. Um, like I said earlier, he was the um, he was initiated into the Seven Golden Rays of Peru, um, mm-hmm. and the high members um, gave him authority. Um, their names was Lord uh, Mesimo and Yogi, uh, what's his name, Chris, um, well, Christopher Brooks, I'll go by that name. I'll, I'll give that name. Um, there was that told him go and form, he didn't have the right to go and form that order. Um, he also um, studied up on the Round Nephil, which is also a fair society. He was a member of Amark, which is the ancient mystic order of the Rose Cross. Mm. Um, he also was a part of the Harry Krishna movement, um, the, um, the Eagle Wings Institute, and founder of the, um, the Holy Temple of Menelik. All right, so that's just a few things for which that prince made. He also was the Crown Prince of Empire Washington D. Jackson Monument, given that title June 7, 1999, which was his birthday, was June 7. So he's also a Gemini, and so this is only right to bring everything together in the Gemini um, sun. And of course, right. his Gemini new moon, as we're talking about, is going to be. Huh? The right Gemini new moon today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Nice. So some wow. of his other that... achievements. Right. So some of his other achievements was um actually he was a spiritual um a spiritual advisor, intuitive psychic, tarot card reader, room reader. Um he was initiated into um the Yoruba by actually Tupac's aunt. All right. Um the sister mm-hmm. of um, Asada from Shakur, as well as also Tupac's mother, um, Prince Bay, um, mm. his wow. godmother. Um, also, um, Shaman, he was a Shaman healer. He was um, initiated to the traditional um, Ushi Reiki healing system. He's a pranic healer, instructed Qigong. Um, he taught me all of this back in the early 90s, mid 90s. Um, he basically was a magician, he also was a musician. He played the drums. Wow. Um, he also sang. Yeah. He also sang. Um, when he first got into the, um, I guess you would say, when he first got into with the Empress, part of the um, Washington D. Dr. Manya, he was the bodyguard for the Empress. Um, he also was a student of Moses Powell, Grandmaster Moses Powell. Um so, wow. Um, so, so when you talk about um, Prince Bay, mm-hmm. when you talk about Prince Bay, you're <laughs> that's a lot of knowledge. Yeah. It is. Exactly. To pull together yeah. to to put right. this together. To put yeah, this together. So that in, yeah. Right, that leads yeah. into the next question because you know, this is it's a spiritual order. So what would you say, considering all the things that Prince Bay was into um, and the outlines that he set up for us within this order, when, you know, naturally a person would ask, you know, well, does was the, the, the indigenous cosmic golden ray order of Melchizedek, is that a religion? What's the religion um, within that? Um, is there a religion within it? Let's, let's look at the word religion and take it back to religo, which is the Latin name for it, which means to be bind back or tie back. What is he being bind or tie back to? It is nothing more than your higher self, your God, you know. Um, so, yes, it's a religion. In that sense, you are attempting to bind you back to your higher self, back to your God, your Lord, the personal Savior, not to my God, Lord, the personal Savior, not to someone else's God, Lord, the personal Savior, Nothing to look, make you look outside yourself, but always look within yourself for your answers in order to move forward, um, on, you know, in this journey called life. So mm-hmm. in that sense, a religion. But Prince Bay was ordained minister of, Afrocentric, of the Afrocentric temple, as well as also an ordained member, um, minister of the ancient Coptic church. So uh, in that regard, and as he said, he also was the secretary in the MSTA, More Science Temple of America, Temple 21. Um, so when we look at that, you know, we understand that just like it is on the MSTA card, that we honor all the pro- 
prophets, we honor Jesus, Muhammad, you know, Christians, you know. Right. You know, in the right. Holy you know, Cross, Krishna, you know, you know, so that's the same thing as far as a religion. It's not a religion per se, but to get into the faith um, belief system um, in that regard. We take the best right. um, of all the so-called religions and apply them and see the things in which that works the best for us. In other words, this is now the foundation of a culture that we are developing. Mm-hmm. So it's not more right. so it's not so much so a religion, but more so a development of a culture that we are um, attempting to do. Um, so anyone from any of the various schools of thoughts can come and become initiated into the order of Mount Chesbeck. So that don't matter if it doesn't matter if you um Palama Yambe, um, if you're um also a sect, if you're Freemason, you know, if you're a Rosicrucian, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, we encompass all of that. You know, because we and also, think about holistic thinking. Right. What you just um was talking about Prince Bay being initiated, there's folks out there initiated in several different orders. And um, just as a as another question along with that, um, because I deal with that <laughs> um, from time to time when, you know, you tell folks that you have, um, you know, when they ask, well, what's your religion? You know, because they see you, you know, walk a certain way and carry yourself with a certain light. Um they wonder, okay, well, what, <laughs> what, what, what are you into that's having you walk like that? And then when you answer, oh, well, I'm, you know, I have, you know, I'm into Sufism, and I'm, you know, he was into, that, obviously, that's Gnostic Christianity, uh, Sufi, right. Sufism is, you know, basically right. um, esoteric Islam, and you're saying, right. that he was, you know, in the ancient right. Egyptian he the order, right? He was the order of the um, Sufi Brotherhood. He was a member of the order of the Sufi Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, just for the listeners, you, you when I get asked that question, so, well, aren't you? That, no, that just leads to confusion because you're in all of these different things. There's only one God. Can you address that question? Of course, it's very easy. Yes, one God in which that has many attributes in which that um, people misinterpret as far as to be religion. When it's nothing more than attributes of God in which that all leads back to the same path, but. It depends on what fits for you, the individual. If you're comfortable right. worshiping a white man who's supposed to come out the sky or who died for your sins 2,000 years ago, then so be it. For those who are not into that, <laughs> then, of course, they look for something else. You know, everyone does mm-hmm. not have to worship a white man coming out the sky waiting to be saved. You know, um, mm-hmm. how idiotic does that sound? But that's exactly <laughs> what the majority of our people are doing. So, exactly. um, until they can, you know, until they can bypass that, please don't ask me no questions about the belief system because you can't even get past mythology, <laughs> you know, what they, what they're you know, dealing with. Let alone trying to ask someone a question about doesn't that lead to the future? There's only one God, like you said, so how does that lead to confusion? Right. You know? Right. Right. First is confusion they can't see God within themselves because they're so busy putting their energy and efforts outside of themselves um, trying to be so right, you know, mm. and in return actually being so wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, that, that's a little bit of a paradox to say there's one God, but so which one do you worship? <laughs> exactly. So you kind of stick exactly. to yourself. <laughs> exactly. There's one God, so, you know. One guy, you can't right. be doing all one these state, different. Yes, you can't be into all these different right. things, and yes. Um, so, with that being said, what are some of the basic principles of of the order? Well, our motto is basically "Know thyself, and you will know the universe and God." Um, of course, that is um, an ancient Egyptian or ancient African proverb. So, if you go by that, um, of course, you know that was on the temple walls. And over the temples throughout Egypt, um, our symbol is the eight-pointed star, um, in which that is called the Star of Osa. Um, that is our star, as well as also uh, when you 
go to the scripture, you have the Melchizedek priesthood, which is, of course, greater than the priesthood descended from Abraham, descended from um, Aaron, or the Leviticus priesthood, so it was greater than that. Um, this is why Hebrews, the 15th and the 17th chapter, as well as also Psalms 110, um, God emphatically swore that the Messiah would be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Because the Messiah, which is the Melchizedek, on the Melchizedekian priest, you know, um, all of that symbolizes a higher level of consciousness. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, so we understand that, you know, to its fullest. Um, our mission, um, I guess you'll say, a question could be asked, well, why indigenous? Well, this was present today. He's going to the East Nation, like we said. He was the crown prince of the Empire of the Dictatorial under the auspices of His Highness, um, the Emperor's Bridiasi Tierra Turnica. Washington, I guess, on our bay, who bestowed his title, Crown Prince, like I said, June 7, 1999. Um, so that's the reason why we deal with the indigenous aspect. Some of the things uh-huh. that Prince Bay wanted us to master was um, signs of ancestral, um, ancestral acknowledgement, historical uh, research, religious studies, Ecology, you know, also with geophysics, um, astrology, um, astrology or cosmology, archaeology, anthropology, and biochemistry um, or genetics. All right, some of the healing sciences that he wanted to go into was, of course, um, Reiki, pranayama yoga, which is actually pranic healing, naga yoga, which is kundalini, um, tantra kriya mm-hmm. yoga. Um, electromagnetic um, magnet, um, modality, massage, suggestion, um, dealing also with hypnotism and projection of thoughts, all right? Um, these are things that right. he worked on. Um, also, of course, herbalism and herbology. So these are just some of the aspects. Also, he wanted us to um, develop free healing services twice a week with meditation and prayer, um, chanting, Dickering, um, doing those sounds of power, hesis or hekau, or mantras and mutras, signs of breath, mm-hmm. song, and rhythmic dance, and drumming. Um, some of the other things he wanted us to get into was um, communication with the higher self, also with the ancestors, but no demonology. In other words, no blood sacrifices, for they are not necessary for the universe. It's abundant with frantic energy. Which is um, which is actually red light blood, so it is actually a light force, post or cosmic energy, in which they right. actually are dealing with. Um, even though he was initiated into the Yoruba, um, I remember he asked his godmother, um, Tupac Sain, about you know why um, is sacrifice necessary when the universe is abundant with energy? Um, is it not um, you know necessary or possible to actually bypass a blood sacrifice and tap directly into the universal life force, you know, being that it is one and the mm-hmm. same. Um, right. She stated, um, she stated, yes, of course, you know, um, but most people have not master all, which is the science of the mind. Um, so that means that all these particular rituals are just to get you, it's, a, it's just a tool to get you to the point of being able to tap into the deeper um, conscious levels of the mind. All right, we mm-hmm. always think about the different levels of consciousness. We talk about the seven consciousness, interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, life consciousness, um, um, subconsciousness, superconsciousness, magnetic consciousness, and infinite consciousness. So once you master all these particular tools, um, you can actually begin to start going into your higher self or going into infinite consciousness and becoming one with your higher self and therefore um, these particular things are no longer necessary. All right, so that's what he was actually trying to teach us is that we can go beyond, um, you know, the blood sacrifices and all these things that wasn't necessary. He also spoke about mastering right. of your diet, um, herbal practices, 
personal hygiene practices as well as also spiritual cleansing. Um, some things that he said that we can start selling or doing is actually selling the fruit, growing, growing and selling the fruit, um, healing edibles, herbal remedies, um, incense, soaps, oils, ointments, bath salts, and etc. All right. Right. Um, also, that, that does that does appear to be when you look on the um, drlemailbay.com um, under Indigenous Cosmic Golden Rate Order Melchizedek, you'll see um, that there's a lot of references towards healing. If that seems to be right. the main mantra of the order is um, helping folks to heal with you know the different skills that you know um, folks will come into the order. Um, those that get initiated and those that are, you know, even members, that the goal is to help folks heal, which right. is, right. that seems to be, you know, you look at the different holy books from all over the world, and that is one of the main points, is that, you know, if you are a, a divine person, then your presence alone would heal people. Exactly. So, and that's actually, um, and that's actually right. Right. Um, and everything that you just spoke of, that seems that was answers the next question about the daily practices that um, we should be doing every day. Um, you know, if you're involved with Ikram at all, the daily practices to heal oneself so that when you go out into the world, you're not causing any problems or harm to anyone, including yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. Would that be correct? Definitely, definitely. Okay. That would be definitely um, one of the things that we master in you. And um, we master that through the science of breath. The more we learn how to breathe correctly, properly, um, then, you know, then these things will be mastered. Um, we speak about our purpose, you know, um, that they told us to bestow members of high moral standards and raise members to their ultimate spiritual level. That's our purpose, all right? Also, to live in universal order, cosmic alignment, and in tune with nature, all right? Also, to maintain mm-hmm. love, to keep freedom and justice, righteousness, integrity, all right? Also, to build um, health and wellness centers, educational institutes, farms, and et cetera. This is why um, we have um, our land dedicated to that, because that's what he told us. Also to um, to learn natural law, you know, so that deals with um, the laws of nations, linking ourselves back to the family of nations. Also common sense law or reasoning, human rights laws, as well as indigenous laws, which is international law. Also to mm-hmm. establish theaters, museums, temples, um, mosques, churches, and shrines, communistic principles and practices, or natural progressive forms of worship um, to study, like you said, chemistry, alchemy, um, biology, ecology, you know, all these sciences that bring the balance and connection for humanity. All right, so these are all the things in which that we are told to do under the order. Right, I have some um, this, uh, from folks coming in uh, to next month's event on uh, June 28th. And one of the questions we had specifically was, you know, well, what should I study in order to prepare myself for this um, for this initiation? Well, month? everything is on the website as far as the offices and business. You know, um, we spoke about our mission, our purpose, as well as also our motto, but the offices and duties of each one in there. So they can always go and study what it is. What Now the question is, what is it from? It's an order of love. Love of self, love of higher self. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's, that's what it is. That we may interact without a divine love. You know? Um, that's, that's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. You right. know, we have different things. You know, um, as we're putting everything together, formulating everything. Um, we have the offices of the Supreme Grand High Priest Priestess, the Grand High Priest Priestess, um, which is to lead meetings, address difficulties, enforce laws of the order, to issue um, ordinance and helping their evaluation.
list of candidates. Um, then we also have the order of um, the office of captain, uh, which is um, let me give the comedic names too while we are here. Um, you have the Inanetur, or Netur, uh, which is the Grand right. High Priest, Priestess, and Kedetu, which is the captain, which is to lead, teach and methods, oversee security, and maintain peace in the order of light. Um, what is, um, we also have the order of lieutenant, which is um, Emi Kat, which is to build and assist the captain, Grand High Priest, Priest, um, in helping the maintenance, maintenance of the um, priesthood. We also have the um, Office of Secretary, which is the record keeper or treasurer, which is Sesh Perunk, which is the recorder, which is seen as Tahuti, and the archive of all meetings, as well as the bank and financier of the order. We also have um, the Office of the High Priest, which is Hape, which is actually for all, the Wa and the Wabe, which is male and female, which is the office which is actually to uphold all facets of the veil and the covenant. And what is the veil and covenant? Um, basically, is love thy mother and thy father, love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the veil and covenant. All right, so we have the position, you know, um, like we said, Prince Bay been initiated since 2002, and we've been initiating since 2004. Okay. Um, along, wow. Uh, right. So actually, the order been together now for actually twelve years. We're actually, two. Yeah, twelve years. All right. Wow. So, um, the thing is, is just you know, reading the information that's on the website, it tells you everything that you think you need to know about the order of the different positions and um, how you can move uh, within the order yourself. Well, then, and, and to fill the positions of the, that would be up to uh, the Supreme Grand Priest and Supreme Grand Priestess, correct? Develop, depending um, on the person's personality, or is that um, the right, person would... Where, right, where they feel that they would fit at as far as part of their house or order. You know, right. like, for example, we have to, um, I think a good example, we have to... Um, Wab and the Wabat, which we've been talking about, which means pure priests or priestess. They are responsible for the purity of the rituals and the cleanliness of the sacred rooms, the tools, the paraphernalia, and the priesthood. All right, then you have the Emmet Udnet, um, which is um, along with the scribes of the House of Life, of the Emmet Udnet, or Newt, or the astrologer, or the cosmologist. You know, the priests and priestess who calculated the positions of the sun, moon, and stars in the planet. All right? Mm-hmm. So for those who are interested in that house, then that's the house that we belong to. You have the Kura Had, um, who was the um, priest and priestess who recited the magical spell. They're the ones who did the ritual. Mm-hmm. You have the Sashpray, who describes the house of life, um, who learned the priesthood, who taught um, mathematics. They were the mathematics or the mathematicians. They were the doctors, the scientists. You have the Sesh Kelly, who was the artist of the priesthood. You have the Sinu, the priest who was involved in, with him. All right, so then you have the Raquette. All right, so in other words, these particular positions will actually be put in front of the name, but Marku Sutek would be, which is Melchizedek, would be put at the end of the name. That's part of the order. That way we wow. know what house each one belongs to. Right. Right. Yeah, like, for example, there's another one, Raquet. And Raquet means wise woman. They, they were the seers of the prophecies or prophets, you know, um, you know, of Ikram, the prophecies of Ikram. They're the ones who communicated with the spirit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like then mm-hmm. you have the, um, the Sour, who are the workers of protective magic. You have the Duat, um, Metter, which means to be in tune with the forces of nature, the worship of God, with the title carried by the priestess of Heru. You know? Um, right. So, there's all these titles in which that fits 
um, everyone who wants to participate in this particular order. Um, you have the Hine, you know, the temple musicians and dancers. You have the Shin, right. you know, the mission, you know, who are the, um, the funeral, they presided over the funeral rites, you know, and, um, you know, so everyone, you know, it, it's a society, as you see, you know, is it actually a nation? This is actually the spiritual side of the Washington, or in particular, the United Washington Deep of the Money. So, right. everyone will have to be indigenous, you know, to understand, um, you know, this to the highest order, you know, as far as our jobs, you know, our career path, you know, or life mission, mm-hmm. as we say. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, with the different with the different um, orders of priests and practitioners of spirituality within Ikram, um, and because there is there um, in general, what would these um, practitioners be empowered to do within their communities? Well, number what one, we would teach them science of business so that they can go out and actually put together um, the order in which that they fall up under, you know, in their community. They can begin to start teaching classes. Um, we can also show them how to um, put together an unincorporated um, church or affiliation of that sort um, in which that they can, you know, utilize, you know. Um, so it's the same thing in which that we are learning, you know, as more as far as dealing with the law aspect, and these things can be used to the um, of the high priest and priestesses so that they Peace. Peace. I'm still on in the air. Something. He'll be back on a little bit. All right. All right. Yes, this is uh, very interesting. Yes, it is. Um, very interesting. Some of these things, I, um, especially Melchizedek being Haru, and mm-hmm. um, with with the the Prince Bay being involved in so many different um, religions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is a lot. That is that a is. lot. No. You just figure, you know, how much time the average person has in their day and the things they're, you know, able to do to be involved, you know, with just one religion. There's lots of things that you have to do. And to be involved in several, you have to be a, a very high and mighty person. Yeah. You know, outstanding. And your character has to be impeccable. Oh, yeah. So it's good to know that that's the kind of mindset <laughs> That started mm-hmm. the order. <laughs> that started the order because, you know, and then to be able to to walk amongst all these different folks, you know, not just to be an attendee of their ceremonies, but to actually, you know, um, be initiated, to become initiated because, um, you know, I've talked to folks that have tried their best to get initiated in different things and have tried for years and still just don't, for for whatever reason, don't get it. They don't mm-hmm. get into one. So right. here, Prince Bay was in several, several different orders. Right. That is amazing. That is amazing. Uh, yes, it is. And the reason they don't forget it is because they're not on the level that they need to be on, you know, um, in order to, for that to sink in to them. You know, a lot of them has uh, like the the religions, different religions, and they're stuck on different religions and belief systems uh, that right. the European has provided for them, and they taught their uh, their children, their children's children, their children's children's children, from generations and generations and generations on down, and it's really embedded in them, and they can't let these go. And that's why they cannot get with the different sciences of uh, the Rosicrucianism and uh, Yoruba, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, uh, all 
all of it, which is more science, you know. But uh, mm-hmm. they can't really get into that because they're not willing to let this other thing, other stuff go. You know. Right. It feels it's against their belief. You know. That's just what right. that's, that's about. That was interesting too to hear that he was in um, into Yoruba because you know um, it's one thing to to get into different religions from this side of the water, but to get into you know that is a real accomplishment to get involved in uh, religions that you know started or are still heavily practiced within Africa. Mm-hmm. That <laughs> is not an easy task. No. Um, I do know folks that have, you know, are still going through um, their training to become Yoruba priests and priestesses. Mm-hmm. So that's that's you know to hear that <laughs> I guess to hear that you know, this is, you know so many different things that I um, personally know are challenging. You have to pass because it's not on, and then also, you know, it's one thing to be ordained in the flesh or you know, on paper, mm-hmm. you know, to go through, you know, and, you know, do the the book study, but to actually be ordained in the spirit, right? The ether, that's a whole different ballgame. Yes, it is. It's a whole different ballgame that, you know, you have to have a certain light within your aura and your chakras and your chi right. and your heart to vibrate at a level where all of these, you know, Different spiritual sciences are made available to you to become a part of. Right, that's so true. Yes, uh, but it's like I say, it's the different you know, religious beliefs of, this, of these religious systems that they have, have uh, 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 been involved with, and mm-hmm. bought a lot of this stuff that they, you know, things that's been handed down to them won't allow them to uh, sink into a lot of the rubber. Uh, science and the Rosicrucian science and masonry and uh, uh, the higher Krishna, the Krishna movement, they won't allow them mm-hmm. to. You know, it, 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 you know, they're stuck. They, they won't come out of that box that they're in. They got to learn how to right. come out of the box. You know, and that's the real problem. That's true. Because that's something else as well, where I do know folks where <laughs> they uh-huh. try to, you know, they, they have an international approach to everything that they do. So, uh-huh. you know, even in, in their spiritual practices, they can go, um, you know, hang with the with the Muslims and then go and, and deal with the Buddhists and then go, you know, another day and participate in, you know, different African spiritual systems. Uh-huh. Um, I do. And in some cases, right, and in some cases, once one so-called spiritual house finds out about this person traveling to these other places of spiritual worship, then, you know, they say, well, you can't come here no more because, right. you know, you can only our way is the only way, and if you ain't doing it our way, then you're not right. doing it right. Right. Yeah, that that's that's of, you know, egotism. Well, see, this is the thing, that in order to be initiated to acquire it into a groom, actually one must be willing to relinquish the grip of the ego over one's behavior, deeds, and actions, and mm-hmm. rightfully desire the emerging into their higher self. So that right. is actually one of the um, one of the cues. Right. It is. Mm-hmm. That is the key. To be able, especially you know, all religions, as far as I, well, all the ones that I've encountered, there's a um, attribute of the divine that's omnipotent and omnipresent. So mm-hmm. to say that you know, you go to one place, you go to the temple, and then you go to the synagogue, and then you go to the mosque, and then you go to the church, and if you didn't, if you weren't able to see the divine in each of those places. In any way, shape, or form, then that, you know how they say the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Mm-hmm. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, th- th- there is divine in all of them. You know, Christianity, uh, 
uh, if you know a lot about their Christianity that the Christians don't know. Right. So you know what the preacher is saying probably better than the preacher does. And uh, you yeah. know the esoteric meaning of of what they do in those churches uh, a lot more than the church members themselves. And the same as the right. mosque. The mosque, uh, you know a lot of the esoteric meaning of the also the Sufi uh, meanings, actually, of Islam. Right. And the most Muslims don't know. And, uh, no, uh, and they, were, they were laughing at me, as a matter of fact, when I did the video on the metaphysical decoding of um, the mystic of our Islam. Mm. And, you know, I, 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 I was still only in my early 30s, so they was like, what the hell do you know about the mysticism mm. of our Mm. And um, I was I was getting laughed at, you know, in a sense in New York, because wow. you know, they couldn't believe that someone just thirty years old, because this is something in which that a person wouldn't reach, you know, until they were probably in their fifties, you know, when they become mm. a shack, right. you know, at the age of fifty. But because um, you know I was you know diligent in my research and study. You know, once people began to start seeing what I was talking about, they was like, yo, um, he got something in it. He, he mm-hmm. knew what he was talking about. But that's because um, you have to work on this thing daily. You know, like like another principle. There's two more, several other principles on which that Prince Bay taught us. Um, he stated that you must possess high moral standards and is able to withstand the temptations of the world. Um, one must also learn to develop Detachment from reaction and wrong desire. Mm-hmm. There's another one in which that he said one must be willing to work daily through proper breathing, meditation, prayer, um, which is also song or chant or dicker or mantra or mutra, um, mm-hmm. exercise such as dance, the living, which is your diet, as they would say, to develop one's spiritual, mental, um, conscious gifts, which is called your settings. Within the Sanskrit, or what is called within First Corinthians, the twelfth chapter, the fruits, the nine fruits of Christ. But this is what we're supposed to be working on, you know. And when you go right. and do the research, what the nine fruits of Christ are, you will find that is speaking in tongues, interpreting in tongues, um, discernment, of, discernment, discernment of spirits, um, miracles, healing, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. You know, all of these. Kings are part of First Corinthians 12 chapter, part of this um, system in which that we must learn. He also stated that one must learn how to focus one's, on one's earthly mission and spiritual purpose in life and one's intention in every situation. Now, that's the hardest thing to do, but we have to learn how to start doing that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the question should be asked, what is your soul mission and what do I have to give to the world? That is what we ask each initiate. What is it that you have that you can give to the world? Right. Oh, like, yeah. Exactly right. right. Because there's, there's not a lot of focus on that, you know. Um, your own personal destiny, your own personal purpose, why you as a person were sent here. Because, yes, you know, there's reincarnation and all of that, and you have mm-hmm. karma from different lifetimes. But this specific incarnation, it holds lots of value and is very important. So, you know, divining and finding out what that is and being confident in that and being able to perform it, there are a lot of obstacles in the way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Especially if you're into, you know, the mainstream distractions. Right. Well, this this is what I remember. I I read a good book. It's called The Path of the Master. And his word um, by Raha. And he stated that the master may speak and act through his body much the same as others do. Yet in reality, he is the supreme one who is acting and speaking. He is no longer a mere man with clouded and limited understanding, but a man who has become God and a God who has become man. Mm. 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 Mm-hmm. So this is what we have to realize. This is the supreme, highest understanding of disorder, and what I just stated. Yeah, the, the, the higher understanding of yourself, the more you study yourself, 
and you uh, gain a higher understanding of yourself. You know, right. and uh, you know, the, the more you do that, the more you be ready to the other sciences of the world that you get right. into. You know, and uh, a lot, like I say, you know. Even uh, in the Prince Hall Masonic Order, uh, actually, I didn't join the Prince Hall Masonic Order to learn anything. I joined the Prince Hall Masonic Order to teach, because right. I understand a lot of their Masonic rituals a lot more better than most of them in that order. Right. No. So it, it, it's uh, uh, it's like the same as the church, uh, the synagogues, and the mosques the cathedrals and the temples, you know, uh, even in some of the more science temples uh, in the different cities, uh, uh, the temples are more, uh, temple, you know, more science temples are incorporated because you understand they're more science more better than most of uh, more uh, brothers and sisters in those temples because a lot of them have been compromised. So, therefore, they're not going to teach all what we are talking about tonight. I'll talk about what we're talking about tonight, you know. Exactly. And, 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 and that's and one of the things, too, that's one of the things, too, about the brotherhood is that, um, you know, they ostracize membership in some sort, you know, between um, the males and the females. You know, the only time they can interact is doing a particular function. Um, but in this particular order, we don't do that because we understand the secret gospel of Mary, chapter mm-hmm. 1, Verse 123, where it says, Mary said, if crystals can appear as male, then surely crystals can appear as female. Those who deny holiness in womanhood do not understand holiness in manhood, or womanhood, but are solely bound to ignorance. Do not believe the father of lies, but believe in the mother spirit, whose name is the spirit of truth and comforter. Hence, the mother of virtues, which is, i.e., the higher self. We do not believe in the father of lies, which is the lower self, but believe in the mother spirit whose name is the spirit of truth and the comforter, which is the higher self. Muhammad symbolizes that comforter as mentioned within the book of John, which is symbolic to the higher self, which is, i.e., really the crown chakra. Mm-hmm. Not a man from just 1,400 years ago as they would have us to believe because they Muhammad was not even an Arab name. It was an ancient Egyptian um, or Kushite name, in which mm. that was referred to Happy, who was the river Nile god who brought us to Rem, which is the word Salam, which means peace. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, so, wow. so um, mm. Ahmed Ibn Abdullah Alam, Mustafa, um, who we call Prophet Muhammad of old, or 14 years ago, if he he had relatives in Kushite or Kush, which was Ethiopia, in which that he learned of these stories and he took on that title, which became the name Muhammad. Remember, his name originally was Ahmed. His name was not Muhammad. Mm-hmm. So we have to understand that these keys in which that is given to us, you know, uh, by way of the Hadith, by way of the um, Quran, by way of these other so called inspired scriptures, how all of this information fits together. And essentially, it's all talking about you. Exactly. Right. That That's something that, you know, you can go to some uh, religious houses every week and not find that out. Mm hmm. Yeah. And. Mm-hmm. You know, for us, it's, you know, that's that's common knowledge. That's, that's you know, that's almost in every conversation. You know, you're right. looking for yourself. Are you looking for yourself? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you found yourself? Right. Some questions along those lines. So, you know, a long, you know, ages ago, that was considered blasphemy. So we are in a, right. in a very different time where, you know, that's allowed to be taught. Um, that conversation can be had. Um Outside of you know just the the top clergy, um, now one of some of the questions that we had uh, were in regards to um, next month. Next month is you know we're having an initiation June 28th and 29th, 
in Kelly, North Carolina, um, where folks can come and get more information, um, and they can enjoy different um, ceremonies and learn about different healing modalities. Um, but what specifically should those that are coming to find out more about uh, this order uh, be prepared for? In what ways can they prepare themselves? Mm-hmm. And what should they expect? Well, they will right. be able to um, expect um, the first day, which is the 28th, we'll be going over um, the various sciences um, of the order. Um, we will be going also um, into the science of healing, the science of breath, so we will be learning that information, the science of colors, the science of thought, um, the science of pranayama, um, also dealing with the Kundalini Yoga, Nadi Yoga. Um, they will learn all these particular arts, parts. They will also learn um, um, aspects of Qigong and Tai Chi to build energy. Um, they also will, um, we are actually putting together also, um, as part of the initiation, um, what we call a lot. Um, we can call it Indian Lodge. And that's what people want to call it. Um, some refer to it as a um, top, as also as a sweat lodge. Um, <laughs> but mm. that would be also part of the initiation. We will have a sweat lodge, in which that um, initiates is also go through as part of the initiation process in order to help. Um, rid themselves of toxins and poisons to purify them and also build their endurance and build um, and also help to attune them to their higher self. Because after so many minutes right. in the sweat lodge, um, some people tap into their higher self, and that's what we want to do. So we have the sweat lodge, and we're we also put it together for the initiation process, as well as also. Um, people will be initiated into the various um, healing modalities, such as way to pranic healing, um, you know, different other arts, as we said earlier, as well as also it will be initiated into the order of Mount which is a separate initiation itself, and we will be doing that probably on that Sunday. All right, so um, those two days, that is what to expect is clarity on the initiation, Clarity on the order and the mastery of self. Mm. Right. Now with the sweat lodge, I've I've done that a couple of times. <laughs> the sweat lodge is a serious mm. experience. What I heard, it's yeah. It's a very serious experience. Um, even for those whose third eye have not been awakened as of yet, you will still have an experience <laughs> because. That's healing on a in a very it's a very physical and it penetrates those so deep that, you know, as those toxins are being released through your pores, you're sweating from every place on your body. <laughs> you um you know, different healing um different healing chemicals and secretions are released as well. And so you know, you may have a vision and you may have an experience, you may feel things. Um, so I want to advise everyone, you know, if you're coming and you want to do the sweat lodge, make sure you drink a good amount of water the day before so that you have something to sweat out. <laughs> because, yeah. mm-hmm. because uh, you know, usually when I go to a sweat lodge, you have to drink um, two... Uh, you know, twice as much water as you normally drink. At least twice as much water as you normally drink the day before because a lot of folks aren't into hydrotherapy. And, you know, part of hydrotherapy is making sure that your water, the water in your system, what are we, at least 80% water now they're saying? A physical body is at least 80% water. And if you don't constantly change... Yeah, if you don't constantly, you know, add in water daily, it's, it's a lot like a fish tank. And if you can't imagine never changing the fish tank water, 
you know, imagine doing that to your body and to your system. So when you go to a sweat lodge, it's good to drink, <laughs> again, it's good to drink a lot of water the day before so that that water changes over, you, you know, you let the impurities get flushed out of your system to that, you know, a limited organ is your skin um, and you know you'll have a, a clean and healthy water system available that's already you know you drank the, the day before um, so is, is there anything that they should bring with them um, I know from my experience you bring towels <laughs> yeah, bring a good amount of towels Right. Um, wear some sweat. Sometimes they like. Uh, uh, sometimes they say to bring the uh, the bathing suits so that right. <laughs> because you really get that sweat on. Right. 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 Um, and then after I had a you know a questions um, as far as life after you get initiated, um, the responsibilities that you know that folks are expected to to perform and, you know, fulfill their duties. Um, right. Well, so once they we will develop see, finish before duties. everyone leaves, we will see what house in which that they are interested in, and then we will play them which that which um, gives them some ideas on what they need to do. Um, we have a booklet in which that I wrote back in 2003, which is called Ikram, the Protocols of Ikram. Um, they will receive mm-hmm. that book along also with um, instructions on how to develop their house um, so when they get back to their particular area. So that's what we're going to be working on. And out of the houses, there always must be some council or representative for that particular house because during um, particular events, we will want um, the members to be there, you know, um, in order to move the order forward and see what is the best, you know, thing, solution, remedy, in which they can come up with for our people. And we're not just talking about the order people, we're talking about our people in general, because this information is spread out. This is a public um, connection. This is not just private, you know, in which that, um, you know, a lot of orders or a lot of groups or society things that we see, um, they like to keep to themselves and just keep, um, you know, within, you know, um, their their particular compound, you know, their particular um, connection that will click. Mm-hmm. This is not what this is. No. No. And as an example of that, yeah. <laughs> the, well, the so other day, how was that? Food drives, um, shoe drives, uh, food drives, uh, feed the homeless, all these things will be implemented, um, you know, as part of the work. You know, taking care of the poor, you know, um, housing, mm-hmm. the homeless, all these things would be getting something part of that. Like you said, homeschooling, um, you know, we have a curriculum for homeschooling. Um, actually, it comes from Brother Cobb, which is Booker T. Coleman. Um, he gave it mm-hmm. to us last year. So um, we have the curriculum that we have to utilize. Also, information comes from Brother Marcus Cry, who I used to write for the Frontline Magazine back in 2002, 2003, before. Mm-hmm. Um, he also has developed a school um, program, you know, so all these things can be implemented in order to help tell our story. Mm. Now, um, once those folks go back home, once the, the initiates, once they go back home, do they have to um, notify anyone? Do they have to register, um, to your knowledge, in order to be, you know, allowed to perform their duties? Oh, well, it's not about being allowed. It's about being able to um, being able to bring something to the table um, so we will have, we can start having conferences so that we can um, see what everybody is doing in the various areas in order to see um, what things need to be delegated, you know, um, at that particular time. You know, um, like, for example, um, fundraising, what can be done, you know, as far as uh, bringing donations in and then, thinking of what we can do with the donation. You know, are we going to feed the homeless with it? Are we going to, um, you know, build, you know, uh, you know, I guess you would say put together within their territory or various territories. Mm-hmm. What, I, what I really want to see is us putting, pooling in money 
and then he was saying each territory um, mm-hmm. finding property and put together a temple in that way or a church in that way, as we would say. And the school and everything happens within that area. And, right. Uh, one of the places that we're talking about taking over in which that um, we have connections with is actually Detroit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Detroit. We have members who actually part of the order who actually go to prime property, um, I mean, blocks of property. Um, they're in Detroit. Mm. Now, in fact, we that's, have our first church. What, <clears throat> yeah, we have our first church what, there uh, in Detroit. Right. That's that's what uh, religious. Um, now that that goes into another thing, um, another aspect of this, because you know once you get ordained with an ikram, that is coming from divine authority. Um, but notice that you know churches or um, different religious houses that um, operate under five hundred one c three because you're you know you mentioned earlier about the unincorporated status. Um, once right. you become five hundred one c three, you're not. You're not be, you're not getting ordained if you operate under that. You're not becoming ordained under divine authority. That's coming from the state, correct? Right. Right. The federal government. Can you talk about the difference right. exactly. with that slide? Right. Well, unincorporated association or organization, nonprofit organization, particularly, um, what that does is that you are responsible for the things in which it's you. And take care of the donations, contributions that still comes in. The IRS um, cannot just come in and try to open your books and so forth and so on. So that's the thing about unincorporated association. Um, you can also open up a bank account, get an EIN number, um, fill the unincorporated association, get an EIN number, and actually go to the bank and open up um, a trust or a bank account under that particular um, ministry. Right, mm-hmm. so that becomes a good thing to do too. Um, and like you said, that's different than the father with the flu, which came about by Linda B. Johnson back in the 1960s, 1965, um, in which that he decided on putting together um, this this father with the flu, in which that would stop the churches from being political. In an unincorporated association, there is no such restriction as far as being political or so forth and so on. So that means that you can also have the civic side of the organization. Right. Mm. Right. So with that, um, Ikram is not the only, <laughs> it's not the only uh, religious or spiritual order that does this, correct? No. Not that, op- that would operate under. There, there's <laughs> plenty of others, and... Um, Right. They, they, they do what they do. What you say? I say they do what they do, but we'll be the best. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> right. Because my point, my point about comment on it is, is that you know, um, this being you know under you know considered as God's people or being um, religious to the point where this is your lifestyle, and it's not something that you do one day for a couple hours a week, that this is every day how you live. Um, When you see different religious societies that, you know, go by the book, meaning their religious holy text, they, you know, are a society of, for, and by themselves. And, you know, they interact with the rest of the world, but they're very tight-knit, tightly knit, and they um, practice their spiritual um, way of life, the way that their ancestors had practiced it. And the examples of that would be, you know, the Amish, um, you know, Hasidic Jews, um, folks that, that you know, you don't really see their children. You mentioned, you know, homeschooling. You don't really see their children in public or even private schools. And, you know, as adults, you don't really see too many of them in uh, the so-called secular courtroom because their religious leaders usually um, handle the internal issues that they have because um, that's that's another um, 
that's another aspect of being a holy person that, you know, you treat each other with a certain amount of respect. Can you comment on that as far as, um, you know, belonging to, you know, a spiritual uh, ancestral practice and sticking to it, the benefits of that? Right. Well, rituals are utilized because the left brain needs something tangible to utilize in order to tap into the right hemisphere of the brain, which deals with the abstract. So a altar, an altar is used as part of the ritual because you have your incense there, you have pictures of your ancestors that passed on, you have um, your candles, you have your particular books or scriptures in which you read from at the altar. The altar itself is just like when the Christians um, say they come up to the altar. When you come up, come up to the altar for prayer. Mm-hmm. Okay. And but standing there is the preacher, you know, at the altar, and he's telling everybody in the congregation to come up to pray. All right. Well. Mm-hmm. When you have your own personal altar in your house, you are going to prayer, but it's not a man in front of you. It's more so the essence of spirit of those who passed on and wish that you could feel, and wish that, or, you know, which actually when you utilize your altar, you transform them, you know, from dead relatives to living ancestors. And that means now they can work on your behalf. So the things that was that you want to help manifest or bring about, now you have these spirits working on your behalf in order to help open the gateway or the doorway for you. All right. Um, is this blasphemy? Of course not. Because Jesus believed in spirits. He referred to them as angels. But he also referred to the demonic spirits that was in legion, which was 666 of them. I wish that he took them out of Legion, I wish that he cast into the pigs. Mm. So when we talk about spirits, we talk about angelical forces, I wish that can help you. These are your ancestors that have passed on, especially those who are righteous, you know, who changed your shitty ass diapers and loved you on your physical plane. <laughs> right. As a matter of fact, who gave you money to help you get an education or get food in your belly so that you can survive another day. On this earthly plane, they are the ones who helped you while they was here. Why wouldn't they want to help you while they're not physically here, but they are still here in the spirit? And we always hear that, you know, um, we're going to pour a little bit of liquor for those who have passed on. Okay, you, that's an African ritual. That's called libations. Mm-hmm. So on the day, you would pour libations, you know, for those who have passed on, those who are not here. You know, but they're not physically here, but they are here spiritually. So you always want to keep that because that is still power in which that guards you and protects you and help watches over you in trying times and tribulations and um, certain events, negative events and, you know, and situations. You, you, you need that type of protection um, from your ancestors, you know. So we teach you how to do that also. Um, so this is just, just, just another way of what we're talking about. And all of this, once again, without... Um, having to do no magic, which is actually tapping into um, animal rituals, which is not necessary, you know, um, but tapping right into the chi or prana or chi energy, the ancestral energy, which is still here, or which that permeates what is called the realm of form, which is the ethereal plane or ethers, as we refer to it as. So we always want to be able to um, tap into the ethers, which is the communication. Um, that's what your pineal gland is for when it's fully activated. It is the bridge or the doorway in which they give you the link um, from the physical into the spiritual world. And so you can receive your ancestral messages from the spiritual world via your third eye, in which that is your mind's eye. So hence, um, this information is embedded inside of your brain, in which that then goes into your cellular, um, cellular structure or cellular structure in your cells. And now you become a walking um, antenna for the ancestors, you know. So that's really what we want to be because they have a broader scope than we do. You know, our third eye has a broader scope. It can actually tap into the past, present, and future. 
you want to be able to be activated and open like that so that you can gain insights and future references just in case if things uh, could possibly go awry or go wrong, you have a way in order to handle the situation and actually um, be a magician and make things go right. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, um, as far as we talked about, you know, the daily practices um, that, that you know, you must do, um, but getting to these levels um, of high spiritual and personal Mastery, you know, some folks it's very difficult for them to imagine that. Um, what techniques can they use to, you know, well, just to imagine that for themselves to be able to get to that level? Because a lot of folks, you know, you know, are the self is, you know, what they can see and touch and taste and hear and feel on the physical level. So moving from that into having visions and being able to sense beings within the room and being and being you know, being able to pick up on other folks' thoughts. For some people mm-hmm. <laughs> that is, you know, that freaks them out a bit. Yeah. And they don't want to believe that it's real. Um, some folks end up getting prescription drugs <laughs> for for these issues to turn them off because they don't uh, know what um, to do about that. They don't know what to do about it and, you know, if they go to Sometimes they go to the religious leaders, and it's not a good, you know, it's not a good thing. No. They, all they can say is that they'll pray for them. If they go to the doctor, the psychiatrist, there's a prescription they can offer them. But it's not, you know, what we're talking about in this conversation is, you know, on an indigenous tip, is very natural. You're supposed to. <laughs> You're supposed to reach these levels. Um, anyway, but let me tell you, there's a difference between a person who does this naturally and have a good diet in which they're able to absorb through their intestines, their stomach, vitamin B complex, in particular vitamin B12. Um, that is a person who are able to do, do this um, at the drop of the dime. Um, a person who has a deficiency of vitamin B complex, in particular vitamin B12, they can develop what is called schizophrenia. And this is mm. where the person go awry at, but it's nothing more than a chemical imbalance in the, in the, um, in the vitamin which they need is vitamin B12. So uh, that's why we teach the science of a living, which is a diet, um, you know, as far as being able to, and also we do blood analysis. We also do irisology. So I can look in your eyes and see exactly mm. what's going on with you in your particular um, organ, and, you know, if you want to urge the people to help rectify that matter, a homeopathic product. We also do mm-hmm. blood analysis and it's that basically being old and um for a blood type, you can see what your blood is efficient under a microscope. And um, just in one drop of blood, we can tell if there's parasites, worms, uh, fat deposits, um, cancer, uh-huh. and D, uh-huh. uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. All these things can be seen right. under a microscope just in one drop of blood because that one drop of blood will tell you anything that's going on in your entire body. Wow. Uh-huh. So we do, we do that. So this is part of the learning skills that you can also learn and being part of the um, we will teach you these um, particular sciences also. So this information right. makes you never stop. You, you become an herbalist, you learn this uh, herbology, you learn the science of plants, how to identify in the nature. All these things begin to, uh, you know, start becoming more holistic as you begin to start going through right. the science. So that's what we're doing is in order now to actually turn you into a shaman and a shaman healer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's definitely, uh, from my historical studies, that, you know, in the past when some of our ancestors were enslaved, there was uh, an attempt before full-on enslavement and bringing in the soldiers to, you know, convert <laughs> the villagers or, 
you know, the people of the land to to a, a religion that's foreign to them. That was the first, you know, so they sent in the missionaries because that's mm-hmm. the mission is to convert their entire way of thinking so that the resources can be, you know, confiscated or stolen. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And the and the so that was the first that was the first thing that happened is they tried to um, they tried to convert them from their way of thinking, from their way of honoring their ancestors and honoring themselves and communicating with one another. And before, you know, the language, before the drum and all that was taken away, and before, the, you know, uh, the families were broken up, that was that was the first attempt to, you know, and they readily admit that. They readily admit that when they're teaching you about how they did it, how they, you know, uh, things came to be the way they are in these times. Um but that uh if that, you know, didn't work, then that's when the soldiers were sent in and the first people to die, the first people to get murdered were, you know, the high priests and the high mm-hmm. priestesses. Because that's you know, those folks represented and just their being in their flesh, that is that person or those people were the connection between those who walk the land and those who move about it in spirit, you know, mm-hmm. because that's, um, I was, you know, telling someone the other day that, that that concept that when someone dies that, you know, or leaves their flesh, that they just don't exist at all in any way, shape, or form anymore, that's, that's something very foreign to how we used to think. Mm-hmm. Very well, just because Obviously, they didn't pay attention in class when they went over Newton's laws. Newton Law 101 states specifically that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Mm-hmm. So where was they at in science exactly. class? See, that's what I'm talking about. See, they can go to school in order to get a goddamn grade, an A-plus grade for a European system and for a Albion um, male or female as they teach you. They would strive hard to get an A. But when it comes to common sense for their own self to be a melanated being, it seems that they can't think a damn lick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they come up with all these right. accusations that the European told them the totality of the whole universe is that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Now, is your physical body governed by energy? The answer is yes. Quite simple. Mm-hmm. So whatever they mm-hmm. believe, is something in which that is really silly, really silly for a melanated being to uh, believe. But if that's what they believe, then guess what? They're incarnated in order to learn the shit over again in order to find out for themselves. Mm-hmm. That's right. one of the individuals who will have to incarnate again because they didn't quite master this third dimension in order to gain lift off. They want to be able to come back, so they come up with all these ridiculous, ridiculousness, um, um, you know, of saying um, crazy-ass answers like that. So, you know, we, we can see them coming mm-hmm. back again. That, that, that's, that's no problem. Some people will have to come back. But as far and as the question as far as the, um, them coming after the high priest, well, that's why the high priest and the high priest is also must be a spirit, a spiritual warrior. Right. Not just spiritual warriors, <laughs> but also warriors themselves. So they must learn martial arts. They must learn um, exactly. um, 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 different um hands-on healing techniques, just in case of, um, and also, you know, nursing, medical field type of right. um, um, apparatuses for survival. You must learn herbology um, or herbalism, as we said earlier, to be able to identify the herbs in order to eat, completely eat. Um, um, just in case of, you know, in other words, all survival mechanisms. They must learn, like I said earlier, archery. They must learn um, shooting as far as um, gun shooting, weaponry. They must learn martial arts. They must learn all these different um, aspects of, um, you know, as being high priest and high priestess. You can't be high if you, um, if you never learned how to get low, you know. So, um, you know, we must learn how to master all of these aspects. So the science is that we must be spiritual warriors. So, yes, the spirit we deal with that aspect, but we also must be warriors and deal with that. That's the whole thing about Marcus success. Marcus symbolizes the higher self. And Sutek symbolizes the lowest self. Sutek is that. This is symbolic to the lowest self. Marku, which is um, Mayat, 
well, the mother of virtue, so that's the higher self. So mm. um, we must go to warriors. And so we must combine both. Remember that red and that white crown. That means that we must master the lower self as well as also the higher self. That way, um, there's not going to be much of a battle. Right. That And that, that goes into um, the whole point of that was speaking basically uh, about the culture clash. The culture clash where, you know, within Iqwam, it is expected that your higher senses will be developed but in Western society, it's considered, you know, you're crazy or psychotic. Right. Um, within Iqfum, it's in indigenous societies all over, in Aboriginal societies all over the world, it's expected for you to maintain that connection you have with your ancestors um, and to be a living uh, representative of them in the flesh. Right. And not only for yeah. them, but everything you do will go towards, you know, your legacy that you leave for your children and your children's children. Right. Um, so on that point, you know, because, you you know, that, that ancestral um, connection gets a lot of criticism. However, two days ago, what was it? Memorial Day for a lot of people. Exactly. Memorial Day. Exactly. They are celebrating fallen, the, the dead, you know, dead soldiers on one. And it, okay, yes, that's very honorable. But at the same time, when we do it, it's incorrect and it's backward and it's wrong. But whatever, when they do it, it's it's you know everybody gets off that day, and you, mm-hmm. you know you have to you have to pay homage to all of these folks that you don't even know. Right. But to and pay homage go, to folks right. who actually you go, right, right. To pay homage to the people who have passed on on your behalf now, who who in a sense yeah. died for exactly. you. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and then you give them If they were a paid to die, that's them. one thing, right? Right, right. They were paid to die for you, right? But, but then, um, then you go and grill and you do animal sacrifices on their behalf. Right. Right. So, right. Exactly, that's what right? Doing. That's what the feasting is about, yeah. right? The cooking mm-hmm. out. Right. right. Grilling that day. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, so that's the sacrifice that is taking place on behalf of them, but yet you're not putting two and two together. So here we are telling you what this really is, and then you're doing the thing without knowing what you're really doing. Which one mm-hmm. Which one has more science? Right. Now, in response to that, too, you're talking about being a spiritual warrior. Um, that day, instead of instead of grilling, you know, the animals, and sacrificing the animals, like you're saying, and and just, you know, um, doing the normal things that people do on that day, you know, we got together um, in the Philadelphia area. We got together in um, the park. We, <laughs> a few of us, a few of us went out in the park, and we were listening to tribal, you know, East African music. Mm-hmm. And we were, we were all, we was banging away on our drums, and we was chanting and, you know, com- commission. And New Wabic, <laughs> sacred divine word. This is what we did. Brothers and sisters, they were doing their um, practicing, you know, their sparring with the martial arts. And then, I mean, and, that's, and we had our fruit. We had our fresh cut fruit. The children were out there playing and running around, you know, and um, we were sitting outside, you know, between the trees, a bunch of us. And then at the end of the yeah. day, we did a, um, an ancestor ceremony. And it was it was very powerful. It was very powerful. Um, you know, we have within Ikram, there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot that can be done with the guidance of the ancestors, especially um, the sisters that came. You know, we made that point with them. You know, a lot of folks on that day are celebrating. Um, you know, remembering those that they've lost to the other side, and you know, with Ikram on a day like that, we are. Remembering those that we have gained on the other side, because you know transcendence of the flesh is no easy task. No, no it's easy not. Task. Mm-hmm. And to leave it, to leave it, and to be able to be an ancestor is a gift. To be able to, you know, guide others along the way. That's, um, you know, within that position to be in that position to live your life, you know, holistically, and to be honorable and noble. And to be called upon and to be honored, that's huge. And that's not something that just, you know, 
Aboriginal folks do. There's folks, right. you know, in Asia that do it regularly. They send their ancestor money habitually. It's, you know, it's a part of their duties as a living person that breathes air. So if you mm-hmm. breathe air, you know, there's a reason for that. And um, those that came before you, you know, that unbroken line that goes way back, you know, as far back as eternity, that they, you know, unbroken line of male-female <laughs> relations that produce life. Mm-hmm. To move forward. To move forward into the future. Um, that is... That's something that, uh, you know, the ancestors, they set up a lot of things just to honor that aspect alone. But the Ankh, you know, the symbolism there. And, you know, the Hinduism honoring the family and the relationship between male and female and, you know, with marriage, husband and wife. Um, All of the God entities are married to goddesses. Maintaining that balance and producing mm-hmm. children. We have a exactly. person on the line. Yep, I'm here. Yeah, we're here to hear. We're here. <laughs> Just hearing you out, sister. Yeah, I'm here. Yes. Oh, you that, that oh, we, yeah, we did that. We, we did that uh, the other day. Oh no, that's what I'm saying. You was asking me that question. Yes. Okay, actually, one more time. <laughs> no, I was saying that, that that's what I was telling you. You know, that's what we did the other day um, right, on that day. It was very right, warm so outside, you know. We didn't want to be inside. Yeah. Right. We did not want to be right. inside all day. That's something that we're going to add to um, this this ritual book that we're putting together, that I'm putting together okay, for uh, the okay. initiates. Yes. Right. Yes. Oh wait, 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 let's speak about that. I mean, that's something else that we need to speak about. Um, and you, you made mention of the fact of the ritual book. Um, um, tell us some things in which that is the concepts behind the ritual book and um, or the development of an actual culture, because that's actually what this is, you know, really doing. Um, tell us about that. Well, we've been performing um, rituals for every. New moon, full moon, uh, solstice, and equinox, um, and other very, very holy days um, since the night of Ashura, which is a very holy day amongst many religions, um, the last one uh, late last year. And moving in this energy... (laughs) Very, you know, you stick into nature basically right. and understanding how that works um, because there's different levels to being, you know, in a priesthood, especially one that follows nature, um, where you have to, you know, maintain your physical uh, clarity, meaning, you know, constantly cleansing and providing nutrients to yourself. Um, and working with nature, you know, with the rays of the sun and the earth and the moon moving at all times. There's different vibrations that come to the planet and affects all of us. Um, So to honor these changes in these frequencies, there are certain uh, times where they're very, very potent, and there's things that you should do and can do to uh, take advantage of that within your life. Um, It affects, you know, each of us as we are manifested in the flesh. We come here at different times, um, different months, you know, different manifestation um, and so the energy that comes to the planet you know it's it's all coming from the sun it's all coming from the moon mm-hmm. it's emanating from the earth it's coming from these different planets that you know are moving along right along with us coming from these different stars but because we all come in individually on different times um, or at different times in different locations it affects us specifically just you know a tad bit different but there are some generalizations so that um, are going to be a part of this ritual book will help each of us to um, to better understand how to move along. Because, uh, for instance, tonight is the new moon in Gemini, and that has a lot to do with 
you know, not just talking about it, but being about it. Mm-hmm. And um, Gemini, you know, that's that's the one that <laughs> communicates, a great communicator, being able to see things from, from all different angles. But in this essence, with it being in a new moon, with a new moon being, uh, you know, just dwelling within this Gemini energy has a lot to do with with making sure that we don't see things uh, for what we want them to be, but to see them as they actually are. So, you know, just that lesson alone, just that lesson alone, there's, you know, there's a lot that, that goes into that. And there's certain things that, you know, will be shown at this point. Being that, you know, again, again the new moon in Gemini, that means that, you know, liars and deceivers are actually going to be pulled out because, you know, not just the new moon in Gemini, but you have that, you know, that grand cardinal cross still, you know, um, still in effect. You know, at some point, the degrees that, that make it up are, you know, more direct than others, but it's, it's still out there. Um, and this is, you know, something that our ancestors used to do. They watched the stars. Mm-hmm. They watched the stars and they made decisions. Um, based on the movement And um, A lot, you know, the holy books have a lot of Information <laughs> as far As, you know um, Being able to Not just, you know Be in the flesh And, you know, do what your personal Mission is upon the planet But to also understand nature to Understand nature On a level that you are Not just the subject Of it but you can actually benefit from it more than just being able to, you know, um, know when to harvest the food and know when to plant the food and know when to sow and when to reap, but also being able to understand the psychology of people. That is um, also something that uh, you'll get from this ritual book because, you know, once you're initiated, because um, if you're not into astrology, you're not into numerology, and um, you don't study psychology or sociology on any level. Once you do, you'll be able to tell, you know, what's going on around uh, around your social environment a little bit better, being able to understand why folks behave the way that they do um, as individuals and then at certain times of the month, you know, with the full moon and with the new moon. Um, right now we are approaching... The summer solstice. The summer, you know, just to be able right. to understand what does that mean? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? We are approaching the summer solstice. On a scientific level, that means that, you know, our days are still getting longer. Our days mm-hmm. are still getting longer. There's more light within the day. The summer solstice happens to be the day of the year where we have the most light. <laughs> we have mm-hmm. the most light. And then that goes into. Um, how do how do you observe that? What should you do? What shouldn't you do? Um, because you know, I also do the we do the numerology reading. That tells you, you know, in your personal life, when is it a good time to buy a house? When is it a good time to you know take care of domestic issues? Well, it depends on when you came here to this planet, and what cycle within your life are you in. Where are you? You know, because there's certain things that you can do as a baby that you can't possibly do as an adult, and vice versa. You know, just on right. that, just mm-hmm. on that natural level. Um, because you know, a very basic understanding is, you know, when the moon comes out <laughs> and the sun's not here, that means you should be, you know, in home. It's dark outside. You should go to sleep. During the daytime, it's light time, you should be doing your work, your day's work. It, but, it, you know, this, this understanding of the cosmos goes much further than that, you know, as far as when to, ch- when to have children, when to have your mates. Um, we'll give you insight about that because there's a lot of chaos that occurs in folks' lives due to the fact that they don't understand this and they lack the knowledge or they think that it means, you know, nothing. Um, but the ancestors have left too many relics to tell you otherwise, way too many relics all over the globe, you know, that are in alignment with different stars 
that, you know, when the sun hits it at a certain point, lights up the whole, you know, uh, the building. So, you know, if it works, <laughs> you know, if it works, and they're not, you know, in the flesh, on a certain aspect, you can say they're not here anymore. All they, you know, they live within their descendants. Um, some of those, some of those powers are latent within us, and once you, you know, one of the one of the ways to awaken that is to um, become a part of Islam and to do the practices, um, like you know, like uh, Prince Ali mentioned earlier, to awaken oneself and to, you know, really learn to relinquish the understanding of itself as being the physical body. That's, you know, one of the, I think, you know, one of the reasons why a person would be able to go through several different religious houses and, you know, become initiated in them is because they can see the commonalities within them in the first place. <clears throat> a lot of, you know, the esoteric and Gnostic um, teachings, that's one of the, that's one of the principles is that you are not your body. Mm-hmm. You are not your body. Um, so then, what am I? Well, you have to study yourself, okay? Well, you have to study yourself on a very natural level, so you have to study nature. Right. You have to study nature. If you can't, if you don't study nature and you just watch television or just, you know, um, just entertained all day, and that's what, you know, we were talking earlier about the common distractions, then, you know, uh, trying to grasp why someone behaves the way they do or why you're in the current situation or where are you going to be in 10 years, you could, you know, you could do that. You mm-hmm. could do that. And at this point, there's so much energy coming in. I'm encountering folks that are able to, you know, have visions of things that are going on without even having to meditate. So this is, you know, affecting us. And the other thing is, too, that within the, you know, mainstream media, this is being heavily promoted. You know, um, you have television shows about folks, you know, turning on these superpowers and mm-hmm. using them, <laughs> using them, basically. Um, I know there's a lot there's a lot of cartoons and anime where, you know, they're talking about the shockers, they're talking about the chi and powering up. And, you know, using their craft and, you know, understanding how to use their aura and crystals. So, you know, now it's it's more, and also not, not only that, but with, meta, you know, metaphysics coming into play, new age and tantra, um, the more commercial sides of it, you know, folks to understand. But there are, there have always been deeper meanings to all of this. And... There, you know, if you read a lot of these holy books for yourself, you'll see that, you know, the story of the three wise men. If, if <laughs> the mm-hmm. three wise men, they look into the sky to understand when this Savior is coming. You know, and, you know, there's a lot of folks that say, oh, well, you know, studying astrology is wrong. Um, well, there's that, and then, you know, there's a. Uh, there's a book in the Quran where that's it's, it's about the zodiac, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Um, right. And you know you don't study numerology. Well, in the Bible, there's a book called Numbers. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really, exactly. You know, <laughs> it's like you don't have to be, you know, a super seance or nothing like that to really put one and one together to comprehend what that what they're telling you. And then you know one of the one of the religions I really like is uh, Buddhism because that's not I mean it's really not a religion that's a way of life in the West and you know these um these systems it's easier to use them and misuse them according to how we've been trained to to practice them but you know with these um, esoteric studies much more difficult to get away from the main point of, you know, finding oneself and learning how to um, learn how to meditate or visualize or, you know, do your affirmations and morning rituals, um, where even just, you know, the word ritual scares a person because, you know, this is a ritual book. 
the word ritual scares you, then consider how you wake up in the morning. You may take your shower, mm-hmm. you may brush your teeth, you may wash your face, you may, you know, get dressed, you know, iron your clothes and get dressed. You may kiss the husband or the wife and the children goodbye and go to work for the next eight or nine or 12 hours and then come back home, expect to eat dinner, and you're going to do this tomorrow, the day after that, and then you take a break, as you do every Saturday and Sunday. And then Monday you start, that's a ritual. That is a ritual. And, you know, you may not do it with an altar, right? (laughs) You may not do it with the altar. You may not do it with, you know, prayers, but that, you mm-hmm. know, the consistency, the consistency and the ceremonial aspects of that are for real. Oh, yeah. They are for real. Um, within this also, um, we'll be putting some information about the indigenous language because, you know, being able to speak in your own tongue is very important as well. Um, but in general, this this ritual book will um, present ideas on how to capitalize on natural energies when they come in. When is it a good time to you know work on specific projects, especially if you want to be successful? Right. Especially if you want to be successful, you know, as I, even in business, even in business. Um, there's ways to there's ways to use this energy so that it's not um, basically so that you don't fail. <laughs> so those right. chances of, of yeah. failure are lessened. And you know, truly successful people, you know, have a habit of getting up very early in the morning, very early in the morning to get their their things done. Um, and especially, you know, very spiritual people get up as early as three o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. We've done all work by by noon, where where most people have a ritual of you know being at work by eight or nine and getting done by five. That mm-hmm. is a ritual. It is a national you know a, a national ritual within the U.S. and um, that's something you know that goes without question. And there you know those holy days that they, you know that they observe without really looking into it. And you know how destructive it is that you know not just to your pocket because you have you know you're expected to do certain things whether you've been initiated into these religions or not, but the widespread expectation that you will participate, you will participate in those uh, in those you know days that they uh, tell you to observe without question, and you know um, you get pressure from your family and all of that so. This is not this is not that. This is a very, you know, individual approach to making sure that, you know, the household is protected, that you are divinely protected, that you're honoring your ancestors, that, you know, you're settling your karmic debt. That's another, you know, natural aspect of just being alive and breathing is to settle those debts. Um, and it's very direct and very clear. It's no, you know, uh, secrecy in that because... You know, we need more. <laughs> the world needs to be right. uh, mm-hmm. stuff. The aspects of, um, you know, personal karma, cultural karma, national karma has got to be cleared up. Yeah, most definitely. Has to be cleared up. Yeah, most definitely. And because uh, before we go bankrupt on that, on those aspects you right. just spoke of, you know. Uh, right. Uh, Talk about bankrupt. There's actually I mentioned before the ancestor money. I mentioned mm-hmm. the ancestor money. That is um, a Taoist tradition, and we use that within. Well, I use that within the ancestor rituals, where folks can actually send their folks money on the other side. They can send mm-hmm. them this, this spiritual money. In this this Taoist tradition, where you send this ancestor money, it has um, the Jade Emperor, which in Taoism is, is uh, is reported to be the king of heaven. They spend their ancestors ten thousand dollar bills, million dollar bills, fifty billion dollar bills, eighty trillion dollar mm. bills, and bigger. Mm. Right? This is they send and they you know how they have origami 
um, clothes, shoes, watches, Mm -hmm. cars, televisions, rugs, pots of gold. They send this. This is, you know, these are adults that do this on the regular. It is a a natural custom. (laughs) And it's not with them to do that. And you see how they live, though. In right. the flesh, these folks are living lavishly, whereas, you know, folks, you know, but average folks that don't aren't living, you know, on that level. And here's the other thing, too. When you go to the store and you try to buy those, those bills for your ancestors, you can only get maybe the $10,000 bill increments. This is how serious it is. Wow. You know, or how, how serious it is. You can't just walk up, well, not locally where I'm at, you can't just walk up in a store and say, you know, well, I want a million, give me like $5 million stacks for my ancestors. You can't do that because they keep it for themselves. And they only sell those amongst themselves. So, you know, believe, oh, well, you know, ancestors, I don't know about that. You know, I've been, you know, had, oh, I've had um, folks from older generations um, that, you know, were alive in the 60s that they have this, this feeling that, the Black Pride era was just a fad, and that it didn't work out for us very well. Mm-hmm. Um, so any type of, you know, Africanity or any type of um, paying homage to these folks in history that appear to, you know, have been advertised as the losers, why should we, you know, give them any attention whatsoever? Right. Have that as well. So with yeah. this uh, observing, you know, is the birthdays or the holy days or the days that they transition. That's our way of of maintaining the connection with our ancestors, and it's a very healing aspect too. There's a, there's a lot that goes into that as far as you know those who yeah. are in the flesh to remember their their loved ones that have transcended. It's better to for a lot of us to really maintain that connection instead of trying to bury feelings of not having those people here anymore as well but that's that's what um that's what the uh ritual book will have within it ceremonies um or how to get back into your indigenous and have original practices um spiritually and practically in ways that can help you. In your daily life That's what the book is about Okay Yeah uh, Yeah um, Yeah a lot of that What you spoke of uh, Yes we need a lot of that You know And uh, the, the key is The key factor is uh, With most Moors Coming into those Kinds of sciences is that they, uh, and I say again, that they need to be ready spiritually, mentally, and emotionally for that, you know. And as long as they study the, the, the self, study themselves, uh, and, and basically the more they come to their higher self, and when they get to the higher self, that's the more they be ready for it, you know. Uh, eating right, uh, eating the right type of food, uh, right. Dealing with, uh, 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 spiritually and mentally as well as physically, you know, and taking it into kind of foods in your mind and and spirit, and uh, as mm-hmm. well, and therefore you'd be more ready for the initiation. It's going to come forth right. on the twenty eighth of June, you know. Uh, uh, right. And if you don't have any, and for people that doesn't have any kind of insight. On what we are talking about tonight, well, they <laughs> might run into some difficulties, or right. they leave unsatisfied. Uh, oh man, I didn't learn nothing. You know, I thought this was going to be well. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it's not that. It's just that you won't allow yourself to accept. Or to, to to bring in uh, a lot of this a lot of the science into you because you're still stuck on you know what you believe in religiously 
so you might say, oh, that contradicts what, well, not against what I read in the Bible or what I read in the Quran, or what I read in the Zendavestas or what I read in the uh, the Bhagavad Gita, you know, or mm-hmm. so on and so on, you know. And uh, but they all fail to realize they all come from the same schools, from the right. most comedic, uh, uh temples, you know, in ancient times. Right. And, uh, you know, it's like this. If you can't get them to see uh, what the basic principles that they are not black, Negro, colored, Ethiopian, African-American, people of color, uh, so on and so on, but then there's mm-hmm. no even going to further else with them because anything else you right. try to, to bring to them, it just won't, it's not going to register, you know. Right, and that that's a commitment to be against it. <laughs> the, those that um, folks that that are you know anti-indigenous, anti-aboriginal, anti-Moorish, that mm-hmm. is a commitment. That is yeah. a commitment to not see things any other way than the way that they want to see it. Right. Um, but you know, as I talked about the other day, how we were out at the park, and some of those sisters they had never done that before. And right. um, I'm not sure if the brothers, you know, the brothers over there, um, I know two of them probably have, but one, I, I'm, he may not have ever done that before. So it was a little bit difficult, you know, to get in tune with the drum, to get mm-hmm. in tune with the drum, you know. And I mentioned to them, you know, we are melanated folks. We, this is, this right. is ours. <laughs> you know, you should... We should don't you know have any. There should be no embarrassment, no shame. This is your drum. Work it. You know right. you have to right. get into it just to be able to make you know to be able to make a beat. That is that's something that's unique. You know, um, with hip hop traveling the way that it has in just a very short amount of time, there are folks that you know genetically would have had great difficulty in making a beat. That yeah. and do it with much, you know, with much ease now, just because of how hard the bass thumps when they hear something, you know, hip hop. Um, so, you know, but being able to play, you know, you know, a drum set is quite different from, you know, your hands and palms touching the natural elements, you know, of, you know, some type of animal skin and and wood. And you're actually, you know, responsible for keeping a beat <laughs> amongst a crowd of people. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. So just that aspect of loan, you know, just just being able to get in tune in that way, you know, the meta, you know, the the metaphysics, the, the meditation, affirmations, and all of that. But to feel that, um, you know, going to uh, school, Western schooling. For for Africans, African descendants, that's um, in many ways it it tears us away from our culture. Yeah. And it, it makes us feel negatively about our ancestors mm-hmm. and our ancestral practices. Um, the drum, though, that's you know everybody likes the drum, but to get on it, it's it's not so easy. Right. And to um. To, like I said, to make a beat and to be harmonious with others, I had to, you know, and I and I definitely want to do that again. They, we all had a great time. It was wonderful. Um, it's just, you know, whenever you get with folks and you you want to just immediately just make some harmony, you have to get through. Well, how do I feel about myself and what is this person doing over here? Um, you know, looking at each other as strangers. That's um, that's a that's a Western. Yeah. That's a very Western, you know. <laughs> yeah. So they, they God, yeah. They're, Instead of embracing they're, each know, other as family, you know. Right. This is a person that I don't know yet. This is a fir- this is a friend that I don't know yet. Um, whereas you know Western society is basically built, you know, and especially right now with all the you know the revolutionary um, concepts that are passed around through, you know, all the different types of, of folks that are here now, um, with all the different belief systems that are political, right? Um, right. It's, you know, to try and to communicate and to harmonize 
Um, we have to get to a lot of, you know, how we feel about our personal selves. So um, with the with this, you know, now this push of the Aboriginal mind state um, and Aboriginal consciousness overall and in general, that is um, being introduced now. Um, I think that, you know, the rights of indigenous people, that that document uh, by the UN has a lot to do with that. But then at the same time, we're in a new age where that brotherhood is, is you know, supposed to come back. Um, so, you know, um, being able to connect with each other in this way mm-hmm. um, on a personal and human level, that <laughs> that is a science that is very unique to uh, aboriginals and indigenous folks. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just watching um, one of the Moors talk about uh, talk about when you know supposedly when Columbus came over in his own diaries he talked about how he was greeted by about two thousand Aboriginals mm-hmm. and that doesn't really happen <laughs> when with that when they gave him food shelter clothing gifts him and his crew. <laughs> And in exchange, what did they get? <laughs> what a, they got they got death, you know. Right. They got smallpox and and venereal diseases and the like, you know. In return, you know, I had one sister tell me today that uh, actually Columbus was lost. You know, he mm-hmm. didn't discover anything. You know, he was lost. And you know, he was he was it was already discovered long, you know, before he came on the scene, you know. And, right. Uh, and like I, like you said, what did they get for their hospitality when the man did arrive, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. uh a lot of strife and backstabbings and murders and you know, you name it, you know. Right. Uh, you know, you know Every kind of every kind of low life thing they could do to the people to wipe them out, you know. Mm-hmm. And that mentality has taken over the raping, yeah. murdering, stealing, lying. That's yeah. not a divine. <laughs> None of those things are coming from a divine mindset. No, come from a twisted mindset, you know. Right. From people that are uh, criminally insane, you know. Right. And so and sad, it's, it's, it's the saddest part about it, those are the people that's ruling the world, you know, by criminally insane, right. twisted-minded people, you know. And right. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the sad part about it. Right. And it was, um, what is it, in ancient times, the pharaohs and a lot of leaders within um, the different um, global um, nations, in ancient times, you had to be a son or a daughter of the divine to be considered um, eligible to rule. Uh-huh. You couldn't, you know, you couldn't just be, you know, um, an arbitration that that just, you know, tries to be a good person. Um, that they can't. It's convenient. You had to be truly divine, and it had to be proven. You had to be able to heal. Other right. People. You had to, you know, be able to do that service, which is very important. Um, you had to be able to protect folks with your intelligence, um, and you had to be able to nourish folks as well. You right. Know? Um, and with Ikram, it just seems like that is what we are. That's our, you know, what the motto of knowing thyself is important, so that. You know, you can you make sure that you check your behaviors by what you know should be in your heart. So mm-hmm. not just about trying to be a good person when you can or when it's convenient, but you know it's like like the prince said, adhering to very high moral standards, um, staying true to your mission of why you were sent here in the first place, and um, continuously raising your frequency. Mm-hmm. That. Is, you know, um, part of the work of Ikram and helping other folks to do the same. Because again, you know, you have um, the ancestors that that were enslaved. Some of us had our ancestors enslaved, but even before that, you have some very powerful folks 
you exactly. know, in the bloodline. Very powerful food. And, you know, what's going on now is just a shame. <laughs> it is. Hey, it it is. It's really deplorable. Right, to say the least. That is, you know, um, for folks to even, you know, some of it, obviously, that we hear, propaganda and advertisements of the Negro just being a Negro. <laughs> right. Just being a Negro and just, you know, but that's not, that's not God's creation. That's not the divine's or Allah's creation. No. That is some man's creation. No doubt. Right. That's 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 not God's creation at all. That is, you know, a divine creation being buried under false intelligence. You know, looking external or looking to the external to fulfill you know, questions of who am I, where am I, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Mm-hmm. So, you know, the motto of, you know, I should know myself, and then I'll know the universe and God, there's so many levels to that. It's a very right, ancient, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, so many, um, there's so many levels to that, just on a practical level, and, you know, mystic level, and a esoteric level. Um, you know, and there's lots of books written. <laughs> there's mm-hmm. lots of books written on that. You know, um, I definitely, you know, thinking to add the natural laws in there because they get referred to a lot, but we don't go through them um, enough. Those hermetic laws, or the, you know, the um, the ways of thinking of all along the lines of Tahuti, where you know, through experience, you're supposed to gain wisdom. That right. doesn't happen either. <laughs> that doesn't happen either. <laughs> this, you know, the basic ways of, you know, because some folks are atheists. Yeah. Some folks are atheists, and they don't believe in, you know, a supreme um, God in the way that that the mainstream is, you know, that they, they, they hold that. Or even in any, you know, I guess non-mainstream where, um, you know, religion is practiced as a, you know, ritualistically daily um, type of observance. Some folks are agnostic and are agnostic and atheists where they just don't believe that. But then at the same time, they still have morals. Most of them yeah, they still do. have morals. They still have principles of humanity that they abide by. They still wake up. You know, um, I was watching David Wynn Miller. <laughs> he was saying, you know, you're an atheist. You still wake up in the morning and say to yourself, when you look in the mirror, that you say, I believe in myself. Right. And you treat others the way that you want to be treated. So exactly. you can't get hung up. You can't even get hung up on that word. You have to, you know, in these times, you got to go into deeper meanings and fuller explanations of, you know, well, what do you mean by that? When you say that, does that mean that you're just going to go around and, you know, rape everyone and murder everyone and just, you know, cussing everybody out? Um, right. No, the atheists no. tend to not do that, but those that consider themselves to be religious do it all the time. Oh, most definitely. You know, the the, the Christian uh, institution has more blood uh, has more blood on their hand than any of the religious institution on the planet. And just read right. it and just look at their history, and you know, in the name of God or the name of Jesus, you know. Right. Exactly. Right. In the name of all these other folks that they, you know, don't have the experience of ever meeting or coming to terms with their deeper under you know, their deeper understanding or comprehension. Um you know, that's again knowledge of oneself. To be able to comprehend yourself, that's the only way you're going to be able to understand other people, right? Truly and really. Um, so these practices we're talking about with the pranayama yoga and the pranic healing, the tai chi and the qigong, um, they really assist you because you're forced in all of these practices. You really are forced, and even yoga. You're forced to slow down, right? You know, everything is so fast-paced over here. You're forced to slow down and breathe, which, you know, is another <laughs> just daily uh, inhaling, exhaling is 
a challenge. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a lot of asthmatics, a lot of folks that are depressed. You know, those rates are really high. And in some cases, they are the highest they've ever been, in the, you know, at this time right now. This mental diseases and disorders are running rampant. Um, right. Partly because of, you know, you mentioned earlier, partly because of the, you know, the lack of nutrition and the false information about, you know, being healthy. What does that mean mm-hmm. that you're healthy? You know, because for for a lot of us, that means that you know the doctor hasn't does has no need to give us any prescriptions. No, that doesn't. doesn't. Mean that you're healthy necessarily, and um, you know the only reason you even go for a psych you know psychiatric analysis is if you've done some harm to someone else, or you know it's considered that you may do some harm very you know in the near future to yourself. Right. So with this, you know, with with becoming initiated within ICRAM, you are able to provide pastoral counseling for people, you know, within your cipher of influence or your circle of influence um, according to their their belief system. Um, Because that, you know, going back to that divine law, and, you know, spiritual practices and religious practices and doing what works for you as an individual is very important. Um, and I've I've read up on that in certain places um, in Africa where you have the village, right? You have the village chief and the village divine entity that's, you know, supposed to protect the villagers, but then each villager within their home, they have a family deity, and then each person that lives within each of those, you know, each room of those homes, they have someone, you know, specifically that they deal with to right. help guide them throughout their life. You know, in a Native America, that was um, in many ways the different animal spirits that would come, the totems, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and within, but, you know, within Western uh, society, that's not really... You know, you're supposed to just give that up. That cultural clash. Whenever it clashes, it seems you have to you have to give up your own way. If you're an Aboriginal or Indigenous or Native of any land, you're supposed to give that up for some form of European thinking. It's right. always it's always canceled out. Right. You have you, you have to make, you must make that choice. Correct. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, fit in, you know. Well, right. I'm considered a subversive. You know, right. Not willing to conform. You, know, uh, uh, you want to give up your culture. Oh, you don't want to give up your culture. You don't want to give up your language. Your, you know, your heritage, your history, your birthright, your nationality. What's wrong with you? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, that's why we are doing what we're doing today. You know, getting our uh, our Aboriginal and Indigenous culture back, our nationality and our birthright back, you know, and our free national names back, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is, this is all the process of what we are doing here in North America and all over the world as Aboriginal and Indigenous Moors. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it's a hard to tell people that they're, uh, even some of your uh, most intellectuals, uh, what you call uh, enlightened Moors, you know, uh, a lot of them still want to cling on that they are black, you know, which is to my surprise, you know, they still cling on to the uh, 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 the black status or uh, people of color status or African-American status, you know, they want to still cling on to that. It's, it's hard for them to give up, give up, uh, uh, give up and, and come to the world with the, toward the meaning more. Or Asiatic, you know, or Aboriginal, Indigenous, you know. I don't know why it is that, you know. But these are, uh, but I find that very, uh, 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 not only shocking, but uh, what you say, fantastic. <laughs> right. I know they had to listen to us a lot of times, you know, and you explain it to them piece by piece and by piece, and they still. Want to be called black or African American? 
you know. So mm-hmm. I, I, you know, <laughs> those are the people that that uh, I imagine you're going to see down there at the sweat lodge and down there at the initiation. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to see them down there, uh, but they're not going to get the full benefit. You know, if if they don't change, you know, if they don't change quick. Right. Then that, I'm see that, it, that um, a lot of that what they often like, like I said before, is not going to allow them to. Mm-hmm. Not going to let them. Well, yeah, that has that may have a lot to do with, um, you know, in English, one word has several meanings, which tells you <laughs> it tells you a lot. And then you know, um, because it's so not a true, it doesn't right. have, you know, it's or it, it's not an original language. It. Yeah. You, know, you not only does one word have several meanings, but it can mean w- uh, one thing to one person and something totally different to somebody else. Exactly. You know, I had a Just lady today. She sneezed, and everybody said, "Bless you, bless you." I didn't say it. They said, "Hey, you being rude? You didn't say bless me." I said, "No." <laughs> uh, I explained it a little later when everybody, well, most of the people leave. You know, what mm-hmm. I what why I didn't say that. Use that term. I said, well, you know, it means if I said that, that means you to shed blood. And uh, she said, what? I said, yeah, that means you to shed blood. Mm. You know, and uh, uh, that's why I don't use the term, you know. <coughs> but she said she was a little girl. She never did understood why that I had to be blessed because I sneezed. You know, all I'm doing, my body is doing, is rejecting certain toxins. That's into my system. And I said, yeah, you're right. You're right, that's all it is, you know. So she said, why well, I had to be blessed for that, you know, so that you never could understand no way, you know. So, well, what did you, she asked me, what did you learn that from? I said, from, uh, uh, you can get you any etymology dictionary, and they'll tell you where the word came from. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And mm-hmm. she said, wow, okay, you know, I didn't know that, you know. I said, yeah. I explained to her I wasn't being rude or nothing like that. You know, right. I just, you know, explain to her why. But even uh, that is to think, <laughs> you know, to have to think. That's awkward for a lot of people to have to think mm-hmm. beyond the daily routine that that is their ritual. Yes. Yeah. That that they don't have to put them, you know, and that that. <laughs> That's what um, ends up happening with rituals is that you do it without thinking. You know, you practice it so much that you don't think about where it comes from, um, and especially in those instances where it comes from, it's just it's common, it's normal. Uh-huh. But it may not be healthy. It may not serve you as a person or a man or a woman or a human being. Um, it may not serve you, you know, uh, throughout your life stages. It's just something that people do, and that's what we do. So we'll just—that's what we do. So no, why, no. you know, a lot of folks are like, why question it, and why, um, you know, um, get into it, explain it, and you know, it just doesn't—it doesn't mean anything. A lot of folks there are very comfortable with no meaning. Yes. You know, we're doing things without any type of um, comprehension of what it actually means. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, about that is. When you when you say that, you are you know um, going against ages and ages and ages of symbology. Uh-huh. You know the symbols that we use um, on a daily basis. That's going through, past and beyond your conscious mind and your you know just being able to pay attention to your surroundings. That's going into um, your subconscious and unconscious and ancestral mindset. Uh-huh. So with meditation, that um, helps to to awaken that just just on your conscious awareness that you have that part of you that exists. Right. So to say, you know, to have to, you know, you got to explain, like you said, you got to explain to the woman what that actually means. Um, for a lot of folks, the response was just been like, oh, okay. And it's just, you know, yeah. it's, I mean, a good portion of people would be like, well, I'm never going to say bless you ever again. Never yeah, they take, they take a negative, you know, approach to it, you know. Uh, right, I mean, but some folks would just be like, you know, well, okay, well, that, 
I didn't know that. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm making a conscious decision that I'm going to live a little bit more wisely. Yeah, that's, um, that's what, that, was that was her reaction. That was her reaction. Uh, right. Yeah, you know, and I was really surprised. That was her reaction. I said, oh, okay. She said, wow. Right. You know, so I'm going to go, go, what did you say that is? It's etymology. It's etymology dictionary. And I'll spell it off for her. She said, okay, I'm going to look that up, you know. Right. Yeah, I never heard that before. And uh, she was in, really interested in learning, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was, you know, the kind of people you really, you know, really need, you know. Uh, to right. To learn, you know, and, and uh, the more you learn about yourself, the more you really approve yourself. That's the real self improvement, you know. Right. That a lot of people talk about, you know. And um, learning, uh, the, the self understanding, learning to understand self. And to study mm-hmm. self, you know, and uh, then you can learn how to deal with others. But uh, the self is right. the first thing you need to deal with. You know, right. And, uh, if you can't deal with the self, then, well, there's no need in going talking about anyone else. Exactly. You don't understand oneself. So you be able to criticize others and, um, you know, not being able to understand or comprehend them. I have a full opinion, mm-hmm. not just of what you think they're doing, but to understand and comprehend them within their mindset, what they right. think about what it is that they're doing. Right. Um, that That's a skill that you have to have or you have to gain um, in maturity with Ikram because, um, in a, you know, being able to help folks remedy, you know, certain issues that they have. For mm-hmm. problems or health issues, you have to, um, with an ICRO, we look at that from a holistic point of view. Mm-hmm. It's not just, you know, the diet. It's also what you do on a regular, everyday basis. Right. You know, what are the stressors? You know, yeah. more than just, okay, it's allergy season, so this is why, you know, your asthma, your hay fever is acting up, but you also got in, a, in an argument with your spouse that day. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what, you know, you had emotional triggers, you know. Right. Right. Not just. Right. Mm-hmm. always say, you know, stress the um, breathing techniques. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, you know, learn how to breathe and stuff like that. Meditation, which is a lot more important. Also, sometimes more than fasting and whatever, you know, uh, how to clean out your body. But the, the breathing techniques are very important. As he stressed, and which they are, you know, uh, uh, to breathe off all those and toxic, you know, that's in your body, you know. Mhm. Because uh, if you don't learn there's, the proper there's breathing, lots of breathing. Yeah. right with that. So for those that come at the at the event next month on June 28th and 29th, you will be learning about um, various uh, different um, breathing techniques, more than just. You know, breathing from the diaphragm and breathing from you know from your belly button. There's it, that's not as far for a lot of people. Just learning about breathing from the belly button is <laughs> mm-hmm. like that's big news. You know, and it helps them. It helps them a lot because they're used. To, you know, a lot of folks are used to breathing from their shoulders or from the upper chest where it raises and falls with every single inhalation and exhalation. But <clears throat> you know, finding out about um, breathing from the belly button for a lot of folks, you know, that is that is big news. Um, mm-hmm. But you learn there's there's more to learn than just that. That's right. just you know how that's a breathing technique that helps to clear your mind. But mm-hmm. there's other techniques beyond that, well beyond that, that help to alleviate stress and headaches, migraine headaches. That you know if you feel like you've been poisoned, whether it's food poisoning or um, you know, emotional poisoning <clears throat> because, you know, certain emotions, um, they trigger your endocrine system to release certain secretions mm-hmm. that, you know, if your body is soaked in these certain secretions for a long period of time, it has adverse reactions on your emotional state mm-hmm. that can, you know, trigger you to behave in a way that's unbecoming. <laughs> right, so, right. Um, yeah, there's there's more there's more than just breathing from the belly button. Um, there's you know certain ways that when you wake up in the morning, the Hindu system they have you know understand good understanding of that 
of, you know, when you wake up in the morning, if a certain side of your nostril is clogged, then you should really just stay in bed until you get that fixed. Mm -hmm. You should really um, breathe a certain way because that, you know, that has an effect on your whole being, on, you know, what you're attracting and repelling within your aura, you know, um, the type of the energy and mood that you'll have just based off of your breathing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's one thing that they'll definitely get next month um, in, in, with the um, different yoga positions and sun salutations as well. That is um, what we'll be doing, some of the things. And, and also he mentioned about the sweat lodge again. <laughs> that is the, that I've only ever had powerful experiences with doing the sweat lodge. Mm -hmm. That is a very, um, very indigenous thing. Um, to be able to do is a very um, cleansing has a, has a very cleansing uh, effect on the body, the mind, the soul, and the spirit um, because it it gets deep, you know, the mm -hmm. deep uh, deeply hidden toxins or deeply embedded toxins um, to be released, um, and it helps to clean out your sweat glands as well um, because that. You know, having glandular dysfunctions, that's something that's on the rise as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, having issues with, you know, toxins just being stuck and just not being released. That, yeah. you know, and, and in a lot of ways, the glands are like the middleman. Right. Uh, so being able to get released thoroughly with, you know, um, with, the, with the skin. from and I'm telling you, with the sweat lodge, you're sweating from everywhere. Yeah, that's what I heard. I've been in one, but that's what I heard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do me <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so coming with the bathing suit. <laughs> wow. And uh, making sure you drink. I'm I'm telling you, drinking from, you know, sweating from everywhere. You got to drink your water the day before so you have something to, to sweat out, you know. Um, if, you have the, if you have the water in your system, then the toxins have, you know, that the water becomes a carrier to bring the toxins to, you know, the mm -hmm. surface of the skin. So, yeah. Believe, um, so. Before they, I hope they don't cut us off, but um, sometimes they'll cut us off before we finish. But uh, uh, do you have any more questions for Dr. Aileen? Or? Dr. Aileen, are you there? Oh, yeah, we're here. Please. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> I was waiting to hear your voice again actually. Um the I guess the last question well two I questions. I was enjoying the bed. Oh, okay. Yeah. What'd you say? I said y'all was building hard. Okay. Oh, I thought I thought it got disconnected Thank waiting you. to yeah. hear your voice again. Well, the the um, how long is um, the trial period? Is what one uh, brother wanted to ask. How long is um, the trial period once you become initiated? Yes. Yeah. Trial period is a year, so it's okay. actually not a trial period. It's actually an apprenticeship. Um, so over right. the year they will be learning various uh, meditations and various other healing modalities. Um, if you so wish to pursue it. In fact, matter of fact, this um, show tonight is dedicated to Grandmaster Sanyata Sanyata and Prince Mary. Okay. And um, another, the last question um, that we'll have um, open now is um, about how um, some folks within religious um different religious uh, thoughts or different um, ways of being, their clergy are recognized as diplomats um, by, you know, mm. the, by the U.S. government. Is that something that is open to those ordained within ICRAM? Yes. Yeah. We can definitely work on that. That is um, definitely something that um, we put together and get done on Okay. Yeah, I believe we spoke on that earlier about the clergy. Mm -hmm. they, the clergy really have a, 
that they probably are the ones I was speaking of earlier that would have a hard time, especially with the sweat lodge and the uh, initiation process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some, but then then again, uh, I'm not. Uh, uh, don't be surprised that some of your clergy are actually that are uh, are into some of that. You know, some of the sciences that we're into also. It's just a shame that they don't share it with their congregations, you know. But uh, it, 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 they right. keep it to themselves, you know. And uh, <laughs> they might give the, uh, their congregation just a little bit or a teaspoonful of what they know, you know. And the, the rest keep to themselves all the way till they die and go to their graves with it. Yes, I... um. This information, you know, talking about talking about it with folks from that practice some um, other things, you know, singularly they practice one, you know, faith system. Um, they will tell, yeah, well, you know, we're supposed to be recognized. All the members are supposed to be recognized as diplomats. It's like, okay, well, well, why aren't you then? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you? Why didn't you go and do that? You've been practicing. You know, I see you go every Sunday for the last 30, 40 years. What happened? Right. You know. You Why aren't you benefiting from the faith system? Not and not that it's mm -hmm. all about the money or anything like that, but the you know, as above, so below. Right. You know, I was uh, listening to C. Freeman Hill, peace be upon him, uh, when he was talking one time, giving a lecture. On one of the DVD tapes I got, and they said they go into the churches uh, without knowing anything, and come right back out, and uh, you mm -hmm. know don't learn anything <laughs> before they went in. You know, haven't learned a thing. You know, or uh, understanding of that Bible. You know, or uh, anything. You know, or their Christianity or what their religion is really supposed to be about. Uh, I mean, they go in just as ignorant as, you know, and come out just as ignorant as before they went in. Right. And, <laughs> you know, and to, uh, to be really uh, not just the, the church, uh, even the uh, more science temples uh, uh, across the country, you know, uh, or the more science temples incorporated, what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. the ones that have been compromised, they go in with the Circle 7, Without you know, and come right back out and have to learn anything more about that Circle Seven, what they are supposed to learn before they went in. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of them uh, are under the five hundred one C three for one. <clears throat> so like 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 I said, a lot of them have been compromised, and uh, they can only teach them so much, and that's it. They can't go with things right. any further. You know, because, you know, uh, a lot of them, grand sheep or sheep, are probably afraid they go to jail or whatever, and they shut their temples down. So that, that, that's, you know, yeah, a that, shame. Yeah, that is definitely a situation. <laughs> the cap on the knowledge. Yeah, you know. No, yeah. No. And that's why they're in the shape they're in today. I had one sister that said that uh, uh, when we don't get a school, you know, we uh, here it is. Uh, when did he start a Canaanite temple? 1913. Here, here it is. 100 years. We still don't have one. You know, I mean, you know. <laughs> wow. That's a very know. frustrating argument. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That that conversation is very frustrating when you talk about um, the how long certain certain um, practices or certain when you when you when you ask certain questions about you know well how long have you been in existence and what is it that you are able to provide your own members with now, mm -hmm. that's a very frustrating um, discussion to have with with some folks because um, because of you know having been infiltrated and because of um, lack of you know progressive leadership and also the members you know, lack of discipline. Um, mm -hmm. And also, not even that, in a lot of cases, they have had those, you know, they have made strides, and they, de they definitely have, you know, overcome and progressed and everything, but then you have someone that can come in and just ruin all of that. Right. Um, 
because they don't have those high moral standards. They, you know, it's just about, it's only about the money and only about, you know, what they can experience in this one physical incarnation. Right. That's, you know, and that, I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the teachings failing because, I mean, I've gotten a lot from a lot of different houses and the teachings are very sharp. But it's a lot, and a lot of times it's, it's the actual folks that are there. Mm-hmm. Um that don't really practice what it is they preach, but don't right. really follow who they say they follow, um, or really don't have any intention from the start of truly, you know, um, emanating them, you know, that that light that the teachings actually bring to them, mm-hmm. um, and and that's the difference between you know someone that's a student. And someone that just wants to lead or someone that just wants to get what they can for themselves and have no intention of, you know, feeding the homeless and, you know, leaving anything for prosperity or having a legacy. It's just about what they can have right now. That's unfortunate, right. but that's, you know, that's not unique to any specific uh, house of worship. Right. right. Uh, and not just the church, but the temples as well. Uh, right. Some of your mosques, you know, and your synagogues, you know, they they all uh, know the same thing. You know, it goes on and on. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, they don't teach the esoteric part of uh, what they should be teaching them. You know, and this is why uh, uh, every neighborhood, every Asiatic neighborhood across the country uh, is still in the rest condition that they're in. You know, because they don't know themselves. They're still keeping on living outside themselves because no one, not enough of us, people like us, will go around to teach them. You know. Mm-hmm. So they, uh, uh, they, uh, you know, uh, you try to, maybe you try to maybe go to some of these temples and, uh, a lot of the things you would say may be rejected. I know I I know it have happened with me, you know. Yeah. And until I found mm-hmm. out what was really going on, you know, then I found out, you know, like uh, Doctor Eileen explained it to me. Said, "Well, they have been compromised." So <laughs> then you go in there and try to talk, you know, things that you and I or Kadira uh, talk about, and you know, and uh, say some things about. Uh, Sister uh, Val, no, Sister uh, Queen uh, 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 Valerie, you know. Right, you know, this was on last week, uh, Queen Valara, right? Yeah, Queen Valara, and uh, or even Taj to be Bay, you know. And they are, no, you know, they, uh, uh-uh, you know, and they they start snaring at you, you know, because they can't go there. You know. Yeah. They stuck. They stuck. That's true. That's why with the motto, know thyself, it's, it's very important. And it's, yeah. it doesn't come out of nowhere. That's an ancient condition, and it may even come from before them. Um, we find the research that that's, that's a very uh, ancient concept. Know thyself, and you'll know the universe and God. So oh, yeah. When you go into these, right, when you go into these practices, know thy, I mean, that tells you, you know, if this Focusing on that, know thyself, thou shalt know the universe and the God. Ooh, yes. Know thyself, which is all the nouns. <laughs> now, mm. yourself, thyself, universe, God. Thyself, universe, God. You know, mm-hmm. that, um, once you get, you know, in the, to the higher levels of that, it's very easy to differentiate, you know, someone with a colonized mind. Versus, you know, someone that's really striving to know themselves yeah. and to really service other people. It's it's very clear. It becomes, you know, you don't have to have that conversation. It doesn't have to be very long at all. Yeah. You know, as I explained you earlier. Develop that inner sight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As I explained earlier, it's not just the churches, the mosques, and the temples. It's, it's the fraternal orders as well, like the, right. the Prince Hall Masonic Lodges, you know, and whatever and so on, you know. You come in there and try to teach them real, which is masonry, which is based off of more science, you know, as well. And uh, they, 
Most of the time they are rejected. So they're stuck mm-hmm. on this European uh, watered down uh, uh, Moorish comedic uh, mystery system, which is a water, European watered down system that they call uh, Western Freemasonry. Mm-hmm. And they are not trying to hear that. What we're trying to te- teach them. Right. So that's a. Uh, you know, it's a shame, you know. Mhm. And it, it, uh, because they don't really know what they really mean, really what it, what it means to be a Mason, or what Mason really means. Uh, a lot of them, some of them even believe that High on the Bill uh, was a real person, you know. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> it was a real right. High on the Bill, you know. A lot, a lot like whoa, you know, and they go to their graves and die with that, you know. Which is tragic because he's right. another, he, he, all he is another uh, solar allegory. You know that's all he was a solar allegory. Mhm. But I even know the word you know the higher bif that bif means. You know it's it's man, it's fantastic. Yes, that's that's something else I've noticed in getting involved with Ikram, being able to notice um, different crimes that aren't even categorized as crimes, with something you just mentioned, um, mm-hmm. allowing, you know, being in religious authority and allowing your members to believe certain things until they die. Yeah. That right there, you can't go to jail for that. You can't be in prison for that. That's not, you know, you can't. But it's a crime, though. It is a serious <laughs> karmic crime to know the truth and allow others to believe in a lie. Yeah. You know, and that that alone is is a, is a sinful sin. And then yeah. outside of that, to to do it, to do so, so that you personally benefit financially from it. That's right. on a whole different level. <laughs> mm-hmm. Of you know, talk about the deadly sins. Oh. Oh yeah. What do you call that? <laughs> what do you call that? <laughs> Man, you know, just uh, uh, mental genocide, emotional genocide, spiritual genocide, man. <laughs> right, right. On a, on a um, mass scale, massive scale. That's what uh, Prince Prince uh, Aline, um That you know, one question I had wanted to ask. I mean, as far as the last question. Um, with with the priests and priestesses, those that get initiated, once they have their own church, um, are they able to settle disputes amongst their their members? Because you know, with um, with uh, the court system, that that I was told that that originated within the church. The court system is actually originated within the church. So you would have your rabbi or your um, priest um, settle disputes if that person was charged with also being able to um, handle, you know, litigation according to uh, religious customs. Is that is that something that um, Ikram priests and priestesses are empowered to do? Um, definitely. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the church council actually will be most of the judicial system for which they will be able to handle those particular matters. Um, of course, they will have to write to um, the local courthouse, the state, um, Secretary of State, um, get all that information filed there um, as um, an indigenous court um, so that they will be able to handle their own matters, you know, without um, interference. So um, these things we definitely will discuss and formulate more on. Um, the thing right now is just getting people to understand how deep this thing really is and for them to come on out so we can handle our business. And once again, that is one month from today, January, well, excuse me, tell my January, June 28th and 29th. Uh-huh. And it'll be next month. Um, we will be having... Initiations into ICRO, which is the Indigenous Cosmic Golden Ray Order of Melchizedek, put together by Prince Ramus Uzebu Bay, who was Crown Prince of Empire Washington, Dr. Munya, and the establisher of United Washington, Dr. Munya, 
as well as also the establishment of this particular order. So please come out, check us out. You can call us at 910-364-9099. That's 910-364-9099. Check us out, come out, participate, and enjoy. Um, if you think that we go deep on the radio, for those who listen to our radio shows on a weekly basis, um, there's nothing when uh, we have a green screen and we're able to put the information up in front of your face and go over the information, go over the meditation techniques, go over all this information um, right before you and you participate and you get a chance to um, see how real this really is. Not something I wish that you heard about, but actually I wish that you can practice from here on out. Or distance. Or System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Philosophies and theories, shit that works. 